Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. They've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Ooh. How are we doing? Ooh. Oh, Braun, he's in trouble. Yeah, don't do that. Here comes Giannis. Did you see Giannis last night? They just destroyed Indiana, and they're coming for the Lakers now, and then the Clippers are coming for the Lakers, and you're about to take <laughs> two L's in a row, and LeBron's going to come to your restaurant. Twice in a row, you got Friday night and Sunday yep. night. You know what's Just happening? reserve the back room for LeBron. It's funny that you mentioned that because I was in an event mm. yesterday and a lot of the Lakers showed up. Mm. JaVale and KCP mm. and Danny Green and, and Keith Shannon Park. Sharp. Yeah, yeah. 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 Really? Said, AD. Yeah. He said, oh, you need to come on down to this game. Come yeah. to one of these games. Yeah, good. You, you should go, go sit on the bench. <laughs> yeah. Check it out. Huh? Oh, no, me and old Rich might know, huh? you know, stop in there and do a little something. You can be serving it up for LeBron on Friday night and Sunday night. Welcome, LeBron, to House of L's. You see, you see that energy you got right there? Yeah. Now I need that Monday. Yeah. I need that energy right there. That energy right there. No, no. I don't want no excuses. Yeah, I'm going to sleep good on Friday night and Sunday okay. night. Okay. Yeah. We got a couple days before that. Uh, okay. Until then, we have a packed show today. Yep. Should we be concerned about Zion after mm. last night? Should the mm. Niners move on from Jimmy G? And will yep. Amari mm-hmm. Cooper be playing somewhere else next week? But first, let's start with a significant development out of New England. Bill Belichick and Tom Brady have finally spoken, guys. The two talked on the phone Tuesday about Brady's pending free agency. But NBC Sports Boston reports that the chat quote wasn't particularly productive and that the coach was all business. And the Boston Herald added that the conversation, quote, didn't go well. Mm. Shannon, Mm. what does this tell you? Uh, It tells me, Skip, if if we're to believe what these these reports are saying, that we're still heading for an exit. Um, Skip, I don't know what Tom was expecting. Tom has known this man for 20 years. The one thing that we do know, Coach Belichick treat first guy the same as he treats the 53rd guy. Mm. And plus, if he, all of a sudden he'd have got on the phone, hey, Tom, how are you? How are the wife and kids? You got any vacation time coming up soon? You earned it. Mm. If I'm Tom Brady and I hear Coach Belichick acting like that, considering he's never said this before probably, I'm going to be leery. I'm like, oh, you sneaky, you know what. Mm. So Coach Belichick is being Coach Belichick. And so what did he think? Did Tom get on the phone and he thought Coach Belichick was going, Tom, you know what? Take some time away. Take mm-hmm. the wife on a vacation. This thing's going to work out. We got $70 million guaranteed, two years. Everything's going to take care of itself. Mm-hmm. Was that what he was expecting, Skip? Because mm. you know one thing about Coach Belichick. When it comes to football, it's football, it's business. And he treats it as, he treats it as such. So if Tom was expecting this, uh, uh, this nostalgic moment, mm-hmm. No. That's not that's not Coach Belichick's mm. You know that. Everybody knows that. So I don't really know what Tom was expecting if these reports are to be true. And, Skip, look, at the end of the day, Coach Belichick is basically saying, Tom, the mere fact that they're willing to let you go test the market should tell you something, Skip. They're, the Cowboys are not going to let Dak test the market. They're going to slap that tag on him. You let somebody test the market, you're open, you're subjecting yourself up for something that, because somebody can throw a ton of money at him. You skip, it's easy to pull weeds out of a garden than it is to uproot a tree. Now, Tom Brady's foundation is in New England, and someone knows it's going to take a boatload of money, more than the Patriots are going to be willing to give, to get him out of that situation. Mm. So for me, Skip, I mean, this tells me what I've, I've said all along, that Coach Belichick is like, can take it or leave it. I believe this is was a courtesy gesture. Mr. Kraft probably wants Tom back a lot more, a hell of a lot more than Coach Belichick. And this conversation, this call was probably more out of courtesy than out of necessity. Mm. But if this these ports are to be believed and be true, Skip, I don't know what Tom was expecting from Coach Belichick at this juncture. Mm. I disagree with that takeaway before I get to mine. I believe Tom Brady, and you can call him naive and (laughs) cliched and lame and corny and all those things, but he's got those things going on in him to the point. I do believe, and I I think Belichick did make the call to him if I read this correctly. Mm -hmm. I believe when Tom answered, there was 
a part of him, maybe a pretty large part of him, hmm. the hopeful Tom part of him, not the psycho Tom that we see when he goes crazy angry on the field. I'm talking about the guy who, who lives somewhat in a fairy tale world, the guy who plays with his kids in the leaves and puts it on Instagram, <laughs> yeah, that right, guy. Okay. I believe that guy was hoping maybe against hope that for the first time in 20 years, they would have a good conversation. They would have a warm conversation. They would have a fuzzy one. And that for the first time ever, he actually had leverage over his coach. Enough so that, that he was willing to be flattered by or honored by some warmth back from the guy who's been his business partner. Yeah. Joined at the hip yeah. for 20 years. That's a long time, man. Yep. And that's a lot of glory that you experienced together. That's nine Super Bowls and right. six wins that could have been more. Right. And apparently, according to this definitive report in the Boston Herald, mm -hmm. it did not go well, <laughs> right? And that's the first from a source. And by the way, I, I'm going to qualify this report. Karen Garigian has been with the Boston Herald for 36 years, and she has covered the New England Patriots since the 07 undefeated regular wow. season, okay? okay? Yeah. J just qualify it. I know we've had some issues with Tom Curran's reporting, NBC Boston, but but this is this is hardcore take it to the bank, okay? She, she doesn't swing and miss on these. Multiple sources, and she's saying that her go-to source says it didn't go well, and... <laughs> It started off on the wrong foot, and that certainly does not help this situation. So let's let, let's give it some credibility, okay? Because okay. this is news. I like that. Okay, thank you. And now we step back, and what's the upshot, Mr. Sharp? Behold, the biggest story in NFL history just got launched. It's what we've been talking about for weeks, and it just launched because Belichick just launched it because it didn't go well in that conversation. So all of a sudden, it's looking highly likely he's out, yes. right? Because that's what the head coach wants. The only qualifier here, the only caveat is this is a football chain of command phone call that got made. Right. This is from the head coach who, who controls football operations. But you know and I know yeah. there's one other man who has the final, final say on anything yeah. New England Patriots, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. The buck finally stops on the desk of Robert Kraft. Especially when it comes to Tom Brady. Everything Especially. else he let Coach right. Belichick. Okay, you, you got it. But this is the biggest thing that has right. ever happened in the history of the Patriots is that Tom Brady is on the edge of unrestricted free agency. He's about to hit the market. And I'm telling you, I'm predicting to you, it's going to be Brady mania, chaos, firestorm of, of teams saying, we want to be the lucky team that the GOAT chooses to turn into an instant Super Bowl contender. And I'm guessing that Robert Kraft, unless he has been won completely over by Belichick's logic about this, because I'm with you, Belichick has said no. Belichick has decided, well, he's decided two years ago. That's enough. Yes. And you could argue it's because he believes he has completely hit the wall, washed up as he approaches 43. Mm -hmm. Or you can argue, look, I've earned the right after... Right. 20 years with this guy. I, I just want to go show you I can do it without him. Well, Skip, right? what led me to believe that Tom Brady would not finish his career there is that when they started talking about this, Tom started talking about this, playing until he was 45. Yep. He said that. Mr. Kraft would co-sign it. The one person that never said okay. anything about him playing the 45 was Coach Belichick. But I want to ask you this one. You, you, um, you said the article said it didn't get off on the right foot. It mm -hmm. didn't start on a good yes. note. For who? It might have been a perfect note for Coach Belichick. Well, I guess it didn't get off on a positive note for Tom Brady. It's the note he wanted to play. Right. You know, he wanted to send. That's the message he wanted Skip. to send. He wanted to send an alienating end-of-story message. Skip. Right? You said the relationship between Coach Belichick and Tom Brady is for 20 years. How long have you known Ernestine? Since 05. So yep. 15 years. Mm -hmm. If all of a sudden a, high, a, a, a playoff game... Yep. Was on. And you're like, Ernestine, come on in here and sit down by me and let's watch this game together. What you think she's going to say, Skip? She'd call the doctor. Exactly. <laughs> exactly.
Exactly. You see? <laughs> you would. She would call the doctor. What's going exactly. on? Exactly. You see? Mm-hmm. So now, yeah. you've known this man for 20 years, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, you expect to get a phone call yep. where he's going to be warm, fuzzy, inviting. That's a good point. Gregory, really? Why would he do it now? Yes. Because he finally got desperate and finally realized, I just can't do it without him. It, it, this is too dangerous. No. I'm, I'm on thinnest of ice here. But Skip, you know, Skip, you know the greater the greater the person, or be it forget his genre, be it music, be it uh, 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 football, basketball, for the sport. Mm-hmm. Skip, when you're that level, yep. you believe you can do it on your own. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why guys, these great groups split up and they go to Justin Timberlake left mm-hmm. in sync because he believed he could do it on his own. Mm-hmm. Michael believed he could do it on his own. He sure. didn't need the Jackson Five. Coach Belichick, Skip, I don't care you, whatever you put him on. Coach Belichick believes he can win a Super Bowl without Tom Brady. You better believe he believes it. Yes! I doubt it. In fact, I'll go on record as saying he will not. Hmm. But he says, you know what? I want a chance to prove okay, it. Okay, and he's earned that right, and I give you that. I'm just not sure his boss, and he does have a big old boss. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not sure his boss is down with that yet because we have heard zero from his boss. His boss has been oddly radio silent. Well, he did uh, say... Oddly off the public grid, mm-hmm. right? We have yeah. heard or seen nothing from Robert Kraft on this matter, Well, right? I, I think they asked him, Skip, uh, maybe around the Super Bowl time, maybe a little before, uh, they asked him about the situation, and he says, you know what I want. Mm-hmm. That was basically... Yeah, a, that's he, true. he said, yeah. you know what I want. Skip, look, we're here for one reason, and you know the reason that we're here. Tom Brady does not feel... Coach Belichick has ever treated him as anything other than a player. Yeah. He didn't give him preferential treatment or great deference mm-hmm. because of who he was. Tom is like, coach, mm-hmm. do you realize what I've what we've been we've been able to do? Yeah. But I've been with you. There have been a lot of players that was there for the first, that wasn't there for the second, and yada, yada, yada. He says, you and I are the only ones that's been here through the totality of it. Mm. As for, you know, Skip, you know I'm talking about the day-to-day of obviously Mr. Kraft and his family is on the team that time. Mm-hmm. He's like, but you talk to me, you treat me, even though I'm Tom Brady, like I'm the 38th, like I'm the 53rd guy on the roster. Yep. That's, that, is that all I can con- conjure up from you is that? Mm. Coach Belichick said, that's all I got for you, bro. Take it or leave it. Okay. So Tom's like, you know what? <laughs> I'm glad you put it like that because I think I'm going to go ahead and balk. Okay. I'm going to walk. Thank you. So what do we think we know? that ESPN reported two years ago that Belichick wanted to d- just dismiss Tom Brady. Yes. Like, send him into the sunset yes. and keep Jimmy Garoppolo right. going forward into the following season, Correct. right? Yes. And Robert Kraft, according to ESPN, overruled. Right. For the first time in Belichick's tenure, he made Robert Kraft a football decision mm-hmm. that overruled the head he coach. Did. Okay? Yep. So, who was proven writer on that? Well, the owner was, because... They proceeded to go on to yet another Super Bowl, and Brady proceeded to throw for the all-time playoff record, 505, and, and put up 33 right. points. How do we know uh, 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 Jimmy G couldn't have done that? Well, he just couldn't have done that. He we we just saw Jimmy G in the fourth quarter well, of the Super did, Bowl, did, and did. we saw what he couldn't do. He would have we just up. saw him in two previous playoff games against the Vikings and the Packers barely get to throw the football because that coach out there does not trust him. So don't tell me that guy could have been thrown into the fire and gone to do that against the Eagles. I just want to know Bowl. one thing. Is it a, a, a bigger situation? I mean, Jimmy G lost to my homeboy. Yo guy lost to Nick Foles, who mm. lost his job to Garner Minshew. Yeah, and by the way, Nick Foles hung 41 on Bill Belichick's defense, while Belichick had doghouse Malcolm Butler, and Brady never forgave him for that. I don't think the whole organization ever quite forgave him for that. How, how can you not forgive a man that's done, done so much? Yeah, 41 in a Super Bowl? Yeah, baby. After your quarterback <laughs> throws for record yardage and, and scores 33? Well, he The most the... by any Super Bowl loser ever, by he, far? And he dropped the tub. Oh, he And dropped he fumbled, Jenny. Yeah. yeah, he couldn't have. There's no way he's going to score. Why not? Ball's completely over his head. That's, that's all you got. So then what happened? Then we swing into the next year, and you can say whatever you want to about the Super Bowl, but 
Tom Brady threw another huge playoff party on the Chargers that you picked to win at Foxborough. Yeah. And then he went to overtime against my homeboy in Kansas City and completed three straight third and tens, which is just impossible. Yeah. Won that game and then conducted yet another fourth quarter game winning drive in the Super Bowl to beat the Rams. So Kraft has proved right, right, righter. And Belichick looks foolish on this one, no, trying to get rid of Tom Brady but, but coach, two years but ago. But Coach Belichick's looking at it, okay, in that Super Bowl, you talking about all you want to talk about is those five, but he still had a quarterback rating of 36. Okay. He, all, he scored. He's mm-hmm. like, hold on. The last two playoff games I've seen Tom Brady play is that zero touchdowns and an interception. One was a pick six. He should have had two against Tennessee. Coach Belichick looks at it through a different lens. Coach Belichick has always Heisman posed all of his players because he knows that time is going to come, Skip. Mm. It might be year one, it might be year five, and in Tom Brady's case, it looks like it's going to be year 20. Mm. But he's going to have to make a decision. Mm. And the closer you get, the harder that decision is to make. Mm. So I loved the fact that Belichick continued to alienate Brady because he also, in that phone call, he rocket-fueled him into his next stop where he's going to be possessed. He's going to be obsessed. Yeah with proving his coach wrong. Watch this. And what you think Coach Belichick is doing? Yeah. He's going to be hell-bent on proving himself right. Give him Andy Dalton. With whom? Yeah. 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 Give him. Let him go. Let him have Jared Stidham. Show us Jared Stidham as Tom Brady. Show us. Hey, whoa, whoa. Come on, you're the genius? Whoa. Hey, as a matter of fact, he called Tom. He said, Tom, hold on for a second. Mm. I got another coach on the line. Mm. Hold on. I might be getting. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. Might have been talking to Kyle Shanahan. Really? Maybe. We'll call to waiting. Do, to do what? Yeah. To get him Jimmy G back? That would be, I'm just trying to tell you mm. how import, unimportant the call was. Because Cole Belichick put him on hold. Mm. Hold on a second. I don't believe it. Yeah, I believe it. Mm. I believe Cole Belichick is capable of doing something like yep. that. And by the way, I also disagree with your takeaway that you think Brady's going to hit the market demanding high dollars. I think that phone call reduced the dollars because now Tom is just going to want to maximize his last hurrah opportunity right. to go win a Super Bowl. So he, the money will be irrelevant. But to here's him. the thing, though, Skip. All the teams that's going to be interested will have max dollars to give him. You don't think, I mean, the Chargers just, uh, uh, Phillip Rivers was counting what he was making, 28, mm-hmm. ooh, 25, 28 million dollars. Mm-hmm. So they're going to have money. Chicago, if we say the Bears, but these teams will have money. Mm-hmm. The Colts got money. Tennessee will have money. Yep. So it's not like, oh, y'all ain't got it, so don't worry about it. I want to prove you guys wrong. You can pay me 30 million, but I'm going to take 12 just to prove. No! Skip, if I got to leave and they can pay me, why am I going to give them a discount? Mm. Okay. Because Belichick says, I trust Coach Belichick. I trust him. I trust him. They need to come out with a jer- uh, Belichick jersey. They need to sell them hoodies. Really? I'm buy one. In Bill, I trust. Yeah. You'd buy one, wear it on the show. I right? sure would. I sure would. That'll, you be, would. Your, that'll be your NFL season <laughs> goat mask. In Bill, I trust. You'll, give, so, you'll wear your hoodie. You're cut it off. I'm going to give me a hoodie. Absolutely. Cole Belichick, if you watch it, I know they're watching. Mm-hmm. Let me get one of them old BB I don't know hoodies. If you could rock that. Look. I can rock that. Mm. Get me a headset like that, too. Really? <laughs> yep. Okay. That's your look for next year. <laughs> And you're not going to be able to wear it very many times. Uh, but no. hold up. What, when the pages no. go 12 and 4, 13 really? and 3? Really? Yeah, with old Andy Dalton. Really? Old Red Rifle. <laughs> old Red Rifle up in Boston. Flip He'll be your new, new favorite person. Oh, uh, right? It, 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 okay. That'd be fitting. So Karen Gregan also says that a source indicated to her yesterday there was definitely something to that speculation in the wake of the Tom Curran report, reporting that the, the 49ers are, quote, closing hard on the outside. So she's validating that, saying, yes, this is legit. Mm -hmm. They are in the mix. And then she goes on to say the long-rumored suitors remain involved, too, namely the Titans. Yes. The Chargers. Yes. The Buccaneers. She's, I, I, I've been hearing this groundswell now for the Buccaneers. Yeah. Can I imagine Tom and Giselle in Tampa? I don't know, but they do have it's a lot of It's close to the Gulf of Mexico. They got a yacht, don't it's they? It's a beautiful yeah. place, but okay, it, it is doesn't a feel like a big market. And we know where Bruce Arian is with quarterbacks. You, you, listen, <laughs> I, I made a list the other day of 13 teams and now there's the report from Jeff Darlington at ESPN yes. that at least four teams are like on hair trigger, like they'd sign him tonight if if it were legal. I mean, right? Godwin right and Michael Thomas yeah. and those tight ends that he got. Yep. Okay, they got weapons. They got weapons. And their defense came alive yeah. 
thanks to that pass rusher, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Shaq Barrett. Yep. Uh, who was like a defensive player of the year candidate? Mm-hmm. Led, didn't he lead the league? Well, yeah. he, well he was leading the league. I yep. think. I think uh, Chandler Jones ended up. I think passing. he ended up, but he was yeah. for, yeah, for I think the he was, longest. Yes. He was just yes. crushing everybody. Mm-hmm. So, but her conclusion, Karen Gregan, is but both the Niners and the Titans make the most sense for number twelve if he opts to leave. Mm. Okay, <clears throat> look at the opportunity. Look at the options. So, for the soon-to-be forty-three-year-old who is the goat. Mm-hmm. He can just snap his fingers and say, I'll take that one because it's going to be the all-time bidding war for Tom Brady, not, not so much on money, but, but on supporting cast. Mm-hmm. The bidding war will be, Tom, we can give you this, we can give you that, we got this offensive line, we got these weapons, we have this running back, we have this defense, yeah. we have this coordinator and this head coach. You're going to love all of the above. Well, all of this is better than what you have. Well, if you got all them weapons and you can run the ball and you got offensive line, why you need Tom Brady? Because quarterback is the most important position in football by far, and you have never quite embraced that. I, I, no. <laughs> they, 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 no. What you try to do, you okay. So why didn't he do that in New England? Well, why didn't he? Yeah. He, he did it for 20 years. Yeah. What are you talking about? But see, my thing is, see, here's the problem where I push back against people. Is that when Tom had when Tom was winning Super Bowls, the receivers and the offensive line and the running backs never got this kind of credit that the blame that they're taking on now that he's struggling. Fair. That's all I'm saying, Skip Bayless. I'm not mm. trying to deny Tom Brady's greatness, mm. but you never said you're, you're denying his greatness at this moment. You're saying he hit the wall. I'm just I'm just going by what I see. Okay, the well, take no lie, Cole Belichick. I, I, oh, I, got the greatest, I got the greatest head coach in NFL history on my side. Yeah, but I just want, on record, Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp says Tom Brady is done. Because you are, you're saying he's done. You are saying that. And it's fine with me. I just want it completely on record because he's going to have new opportunities. And what you're saying is every one of those teams, if there are four who say tomorrow I'll sign him, yeah. it might be, who knows, it could be ten who would say tomorrow. You're saying everybody who would say that is dead wrong, right? I don't believe Tom Brady went in the Super Bowl. Okay. Well, if that's true, then they're all wrong. Because yeah. that's the only reason to, to, to break up your situation. You know, what, you're saying that the Titans should say, let's just re-sign Ryan Tannehill and go forward, right? Yeah, the, young okay? guy, the, the question is, Skip, is that we've seen guys have great stretches the last half of the season and get to the playoffs and play okay. well. And they never replicate that the following season. You right. saw Ryan Fitzpatrick skip. You remember he had those great years. They get the money, and then all of a sudden he reverts back to Ryan Fitzpatrick. Okay. So look. So you're, you're telling me that the Los Angeles Chargers going into SoFi Stadium next year would be better off with Tyrod Taylor? That's what you're telling me. Now look. Seriously. No. No. I, I didn't yes. Know. Yes. On record. Yes. Holding feet to fire. Yes. Hold on. The difference is you. For Tom Brady, it's like you get LeBron James. You don't get LeBron James to be the number one seed in the West or the East. You get him for a championship. The question is what you're asking me. Do I believe he'll win a championship? No. Because he's done. He's hit the wall. Okay. Correct? Well, you said me. last year he hit the wall. Skip. He's not the same guy. That doesn't mean he's hit the wall. That means he's not the same guy. Hmm. The same guy. Because when I look at you look at a... Uh, uh, Look at Russell, Russell Wilson, when he first run the Super Bowl, Skip. Is he the same player that he is right now, or is he a better player? Is Tom Brady a better player right now than he was five years ago? That's the question, yes or no? What's, I don't get the Russell Wilson analogy because, because he's a better player now, and just a year ago he lost to the Dallas Cowboys. So what, what happened? Who lost to the Dallas Cowboys? Russell Wilson. Well, he did. You see, he lost. He lost a playoff but you, game. But you, see, Jenny, you see that? Now, you see the difference. When other players lose, they lost. Well, when Dak Tom outplayed him. Dak, Hold on. Okay, clearly okay. He outplayed I get that. He got outplayed. Yeah. But when Tom Brady lose, he's thrown to a broken down receiver. He's thrown well, to you, the, you the tight end. That. You no, said he was no. broken down. Skip, you, you can't have it both ways. Yes, you can. How? Just call it what it is. He had the worst Tom receiving Brady. core in football. They they were at the bottom of the league, dead last in separation. And he had the wor- and he had the worst numbers in the last 10 years. Mm. Fact. Below average offensive line, below average run game. Well, why, well, why do you well, defense that couldn't save the, him? The year before, you didn't mention anything about the above above average offensive line that he had. Mm. You didn't mention anything about the defense. Yeah, I did. Game. I thought the offensive line played well down the stretch. No, and the run about, game came alive. No, no, no. You talking about yeah. Tom Brady's quick release? Bing, bing, bing. 
You didn't mention nothing about the O-line. You yeah. didn't mention nothing about Sunday, that running game, which led to playoffs in Russia. Oh, now, all of a sudden, Sonny Michelle can't run. Mm. Shannon Sharp, you better prepare for Tom Brady winning his seventh Super Bowl next year. I'm, I'm prepared for the year. New England Patriots. Yeah. I'm prepared for That's what I'm prepared right. for. Here we go. Here's what we have. 11 days until Brady can officially start negotiating, right? So that's March 16th. He was on Dana White's Instagram Live yesterday. Mm -hmm. He said he's going to go on vacation. Yeah. So he's not thinking about this right now. He's yeah, going to he try is. to not be distracted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's got to say that. Coach, I mean, to Coach, Bella, Brady, Coach so. Belichick is already – he already got his ducks in a row. Mm -hmm. yeah, Coach I Belichick know. already – See, well, then the blood is on his hands. Ain't no right? blood. Ain't yep. no stop doing right. that. The skill. next 11 days are going to be interesting, to say the least. No mercy. Luka Doncic and the Mavs handed Zion's Pelicans their third straight loss in OT last night. Luka finished with 30 points, 17 boards, and 10 assists, and Zion finished with 21 and 6. His Pelicans are now five games back of the eighth seed, and this was Zion's first back to back of the season. And during overtime, he didn't check in until the 144 mark. Interesting. So after the game, head coach Evan Gentry did not take kindly to questions about Zion's conditioning. Check it out. I think he's fine. We worry about him too freaking much, okay? He's fine. He's 19 years old. He'll be fine. Hmm. Okay, Shannon, uh, what did you make of Gentry's reaction? Skip, look, and, 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 I, and I was just like, look, I mean, I don't know what you want me to tell you. This is above my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> Ownership, doctors, uh, uh, David Griffin, basically is like, Skip, he played the most minutes he's played all year. 35 minutes. Now, I understand that the Pelicans, they're, they're, they're right there for that uh, uh, the eighth spot. Yes. We got the work cut out for them because there's only 20 games left, and the last time this happened, somebody came from five down with 20 games left. You got to go back to the Bullets. They're now the Washington Wizards. This 95, like 90, 96. 90, yeah, 95, 96, 96, 96, 96 97. 96, 97. 96, 97. Okay. So that's a, a long time. So, yeah. so they got their work cut out for oh, them, Skip. Look, I don't believe conditioning will be an issue for the rest of his life, and, uh, um, but they got to be cautious. For two years, Skip, he's been out of high school. He had a knee injury in college, and he had a knee injury into the NBA. So they're going to be overly cautious with this kid, and rightfully so. I would rather miss the playoffs in Zion's rookie year and then have him healthy for the next 10 years as opposed to run his minutes up, put him in harm's way, make the playoffs, and now something goes awry, Skip. They're going to be overly cautious. When I say overly they're going to be overly cautious. And I know people are like, well, start Zion, start Zion in, 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 in overtime. But, Skip, I think what they're looking at, like, do I want to have a one- or two-point lead with three minutes left in the overtime and I got to sit Zion, or do I want to be one to two points down, bring Zion in, and now he can close it out for us? And I think that's what they were looking at, Skip. And it, get, it gets frustrating because even when Zion plays well, somehow it goes back to his conditioning. Well, if he's in better shape, you know, uh, Alvin, he could have uh, had 40 points instead of the 35. And so it gets old. They got a plan. They're going to stick to the plan. And no matter how many different ways you ask him, Skip, Zion, look, Zion is never going to be in his life 235 pounds. So get that thought out of your head. The best maybe you can hope for, Skip, is maybe 265, 270. And that's going to be pushing it. But... And it was a back-to-back. -back. It was first back-to-back. -back. And you, he said that Holiday and, 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 uh, and Zoe came to him like, bro, you need to wake up. You okay? The second yeah, quarter. Yeah, the second quarter. Yeah. Like, bro, yeah. yep. you need to wake up. Yep. So, Skip, let be patient. Everybody just want the kid to just roll out of bed and be a seven-year vet. Let him take his time. It's okay. Okay. I've known Alvin for a long time. Mm -hmm. I like Alvin a lot. I did not love Alvin last night, I must admit. But he is right. This kid is 19, and now he's played a grand total of 17 NBA games. And yet, I've seen enough in 17 that I got frustrated last night to the point of angry, about to throw something at my TV down the stretch of regulation <laughs> and then in overtime. Because this kid is something especially late in games, he has been something. And I'm going to preface everything I'm about to say with this little nugget for you. Since Zion's debut 17 games ago, 
He has scored the third most points in the NBA in the fourth quarter in overtime. The third most points has been scored by this 19-year-old in the whole league in fourth quarter in overtime over this 17-game stretch. That's telling me something tangible that I can hang my hat on and say, okay, something is happening in the fourth quarters in overtime because he's turning into the NBA equivalent of Derrick Henry. He is so big and so strong and so powerful and so relentless that like Derrick Henry, he just wears you down and out later in the game. The later it goes, the stronger he seems to get. And I don't see him in fourth quarters huff and puff. He seems to to somehow get second wins or third wins or maybe even fourth quarter wins, if you will. And he, he bullies people into submission in the fourth quarter because remember what happened against the Lakers? He was just parading to the free throw line. Remember that night? Yep. And last night they were not giving him the calls, and I don't know why. That's the first night he just wasn't getting the calls. And Dallas did something interesting. Rick Carlisle started Kleba, who's 6'10". He put him in the starting lineup just to kind of bang with Zion because he's a big old Euro banger. He'll just bang with you all night long. He won't back down. He'll just keep trying. He'll hang tough in there, right? right? Yes. And the whole game plan was that Porzingis, the unicorn at seven feet, three inches tall, he was supposed to come and help immediately. So Zion, for the most part, was stuck with can, can I get over the 6'10 guy? Because if I do get over him, now I got to deal with the 7'3 guy. 7'3. Okay, and Zion is 6'6. Right. Yeah. And we know he can just jump out of the gym and over the moon, right? right? We right. get that. Right. And he can quick jump over the moon. But it gets a little tough down there, and the refs were saying, nah, not tonight. I'm it, not going to give you that. Kleba b- blocked him three times in the first half, five, five overall. Five overall, and that's a lot of blocking yes. to go on. And did the kid get frustrated? Maybe a little bit. Boy, he was still coming in the fourth quarter. Right. Okay, so what did I see in his first stint in the fourth quarter? And I I got no problem with you got to take him out for a little blow right in the middle of the fourth quarter. No problem with that. But in his first stint, he took three shots and made two of them. And I'm thinking, "Uh uh-oh, here he comes. Right. And then he took his little rest, and he comes back in with 343 left. Mm. And down the stretch of a game, that was they were down two at that point. Help me out. How many more times did Zion Williamson touch the basketball from 343 to the end of regulation? Help me out, please, Alvin Gentry. (laughs) How about a big old zero? (sighs) My man Zion did not register on the stats sheet for the last 343 of a very winnable game. And I'll be the first to admit to you, my frustration was tripled because I do want to see this team eke into the A spot just because it would be fun, right? Right. right. Sure. Wouldn't it be more fun? I, I love fun. Ja and I love Memphis, but it, this would be fun right? because Lonzo is suddenly turning into a basketball player yeah. because he's turning into a man right yeah. before your very eyes, seven right? Seven of 11 from three. Seven of 11 from three, career high seven. And th- they've got some – they got some firepower on this team, and it would be fun to watch them against the Lakers. Do I really believe they could upset the Lakers like LeVar said? I don't, but would it be fun to watch? Yes. And you know and I know that would be good for basketball, right? <laughs> yep, be good is, for is, us. Is it, is it becoming a long shot? You better believe it is. Longer. Longer right. and longer. I got it. So this is driving me crazy that the Pelicans seem to have no idea or, frankly, no desire to get the ball to the guy who I think is their 19-year-old closer. Seriously, he can close games. He will make late-game free throws like crazy if you'll get him to the line. But first, got to get him in some advantageous position to do his damage. You can't just try to find a shot around the perimeter and then with three seconds left on the clock say, uh-oh, just dump it into him. Right. Because he's he's stuck between Porzingis and Kleba, right? At that point. And and then just see if he can kind of right. like muscle it up through him. But well, right? then why are you mad at Alvin Gentry? Shouldn't you be mad at uh, Lonzo and Holiday hey, and Brandon but, but, Ingram? But th- there's got to be some design to this where you have plays that you can call. I don't see a play call twice in this basketball game. I saw Lonzo bring the ball up fairly slowly and flip it to him in a little clear out where he stepped out maybe. 12 feet or so, and faced. Because all the other ones 
are back to not back to back, but to basket, right? right. It's but to basket, right. and and it's getting the ball in here where you're you're like at this level well, right Skip, here. Skip the way they play, Skip. Their offense is get the ball out of the break, get up the court as fast as you possibly can. That's that's their advantage. Okay, but they, you, they weren't getting they were, Zion on the loose. Right. You know, we we didn't see enough right. of that, right? It wasn't happening with regularity. Right. And the two times he turned and faced in a clear out right. on Kleba. Cleaver's got no chance no, no, because no. if you let him get a running start at you, yeah. it's, he's too quick, right. right? He's too and he's too ambidextrous. He can go left or right, he, right? He's okay. going. To, if Skip, he's left-handed, so he's gonna get to that left hand. He's okay. gonna get to the left side, or he's gonna start on the right and go up and under the basket. Okay, that's what he is. Okay, so the Pelicans drove me out of my chair onto the floor <laughs> because here's here's what happens: three forty-three left, and here are the possessions. Brandon Ingram comes down and misses 11-foot jumper. Then Lonzo misses a three. This, these are all possible Zion touches, okay? Then Brandon got hot again, and he made a three, and then he made that fadeaway on the baseline where I said, he got fouled too. Yeah, but, but it looked like he's going to fall out of bounds, and he, he made it. Yeah, he was hanging and, there. And it's like, oh, crazy hot. Heat check. Well, here came the heat checks because he comes down again, missed a three, and missed a three. They could have gone up four and four. That's with 122 and 59 seconds left. Miss, miss. The script, the only shot that I questioned, I'm like, B.I., why are you shooting a three with 59 seconds so quick in the shot clock? Because he's an all-star. And I told you, he's got it in his head. I'm the man on this team to the detriment of the 19-year-old. And now Lonzo is turning into a higher volume shooter. And after a while, if you throw Drew Holiday into the mix, who had a triple-double the night before uh, against the, the T-Wolves, yeah. right? I, it's too many shots that aren't going to the guy in the middle. But skip, Help me out. But Skip, again, you had, remember against the T-Wolves, you had four guys that had 20 points or more. You almost had four guys again. Skip his defense. They're not playing any defense. Look at Ingram had 27. Zion had 21. Lonzo had 25. Holiday had 19. So you like to have four guys again with 20 points. Almost the night before, they all four had 20 yes. points. Yes. Okay, but they're not playing any defense, <laughs> no, no right? Defense. Okay, then the most frustrating possession to me of all was the last one because Lonzo with 29 seconds left. He, he shoots a near air ball. I think it ticked the far side because they right. reset the shot clock. And then the Pelicans get the offensive line. I'm thinking, dump it down, dump it down. You, you got something. Yeah. And it's did because the shot clock is, is starting to go down. Right. It, it reset. But, but uh, Favors ends up taking a three from Pretty distance cool. and missed everything. Every, he air He missed everything. And I'm thinking, what, what are you doing? Which brought us to Melly, who was one for nine last night. Finally... Nico Melli makes a three over Porzingis to How? tie the game. How? How he pulls a Ray I, Allen steps behind the line. I don't and, know. And, shoot, <laughs> and, and he got his ball. Yeah. He got his feet behind the yes. line. It was legit. Okay, so we go to overtime. And then what happens? Help me out. Zion is on the bench. And I'm thinking, don't do this. It's just five minutes. You, you don't need to give him a blow there. Unless true. you tell me that there's a hard and fast minutes restriction where you can't go over X. Skip. So you have to wait until 144 is left in overtime to send him in. Because, Skip, you, the thing is about the fourth quarter, there's only a tw there's only 12 minutes in the fourth. He played nine minutes and 21 yeah. seconds of the okay. fourth quarter. I, I had no problem with that, but I do have a problem with only the last 144 of the game. So he basically played a, he played over 11 minutes of the last 17 minutes, fourth quarter in overtime. Okay, and what did he do in that time? What was his final line? He, I mean, Five shots yeah. and made four. four of them. Thank you. Close my case. You got. He, he should have had nine shots and made eight of them. Okay. Okay. Well, well you, so I don't. What I'm hearing from you, you don't have a problem with the minutes if they give him the touches Just in give the him amount the of touches minutes. Because he's last quick point, Zion comes back in the game with 144, and what happens at 129 left in overtime? Could could we see the play? He swoops to the hoop yeah. and makes this sort of left-handed hook shot. Yeah. You see it right here. I'm not sure what you call this. I guess I'll call it a hook shot. Mm. It's, it's unstoppable. Nobody can stop that. And guess what that did? Guess what that made the score? Tied. He made the clutch shot that tied the game with 129 left. Okay, do it again. Yeah. Give him a chance. Right. Get, get him out. See, he started on the right. perimeter. Yeah. He faced, right? right? Right. Okay. There's a way to get him way more involved than he is right. at this point. Right. And I'm putting a lot on his shoulders because they're broad, man. So he can do just, it. You yeah. want him to have more possessions. The yeah. time is 35 minutes is it's plenty. Fine. But if it's he fine. has more touches. But but again, 
I'm still not sure how you don't start him in overtime. I don't know. That's just, it's like. But here's the thing, though, Skip. You start him in overtime, you have a three-point lead, and he's meet, he's met his minutes requirement. You're going to be upset. Well, just play him. What's another yeah. three minutes? And then you start getting into that red line area, mm-hmm. Skip. You, Skip, you, you want 10 more years of this kid, right? Yep. Okay. So you know hard. what? Alvin's on a hot seat, man. Yeah. That's a hard seat. Yeah. Because really? Yeah, because he's going to get second guessed left and right. As long More as David shots. Griffin not second guessed, and no, I know, be okay. I, I agree, okay. I agree. But he just <laughs> you and I might, might you and um, I might be second guessing. But he's know. already said it. We've got we hey, we've already run this by the doctors. We run, told Alvin, hey, thirty five and it's yeah. back to back. Skip, that's his very yeah. first back to back. All right, and then bottom line, killer is those are back to back winnable games. They yeah. could have beaten the T Wolves. They were right there. Yeah. And they failed down the stretch because he didn't touch the ball much. And then they're right there last night. Tie game, 129 left in overtime. And by the way, your man Luca played great down yes. the stretch. Oh, and, and KP, for Zane, woo, yeah, he played. He was sensational. They were too good last night. Hmm. Yeah, give up 139 and yep. 127, you're going to lose. I got it. So Pelicans host Miami tomorrow night. Uh, they're 12th in the West. They gotta make. They gotta keep getting these wins. You're right about okay. that. I think Hot you're seat. safe. I think I that's think that safe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're I'm all, safe. Yeah. You, you, you're, good. you're out of harm's way. I'm, now. I'm out of harm's way. You yeah. can take a deep breath. I probably would rather see them than I don't know Portland <laughs> have to deal with Dane Dawson. I don't know. Good point. Mercy. Okay, uh, staying in the NBA, some execs are now saying that Kawhi Leonard. Forcing his way out of San Antonio in 2018 after a disagreement over how to handle his quad injury changed the NBA landscape. According to Tom Haberstroh, teams have since shifted their power structure to appear more player-centric. One GM said, quote, Kawhi scared the living hell out of everyone. If it can happen to the Spurs, it can happen to anybody. So, Mm -hmm. Skip, how do you interpret this? I am so fascinated by that quote. There's much truth to that quote, but the point of it is, it wasn't scaring the hell out of anybody while it was happening his last year in San Antonio because nobody really got what was going on. Mm -hmm. It only scared the hell out of the whole league after the league stepped back and it hit everybody what that man, Kawhi Leonard, with some help from his uncle Dennis, had pulled off. Mm -hmm. Wait a second. He did that to them, Mm -hmm. to the San Antonio Spurs? Take away. Kawhi Leonard has controlled this league in ways even your man LeBron James has not and I believe cannot control this league. I believe, and and by the way, Kawhi Leonard isn't even on social media. He doesn't even have a single account, and he has controlled this league, and I, I think he still is. No, he's not. But okay. Kawhi Leonard is the Kaiser Sose of the NBA. And if you know the movie, The Usual Suspects, do you know it? <laughs> I do. I don't know if you both know I've it. But, see, okay. yeah, I've, I've seen it several it times. Again. He is <laughs> Kaiser Leonard. That's who he is. <laughs> because he, he is a mastermind assassin huh. that you do not see coming until it's too late. That's who the Sose character was in The Usual Suspects. Okay. He never announces his intentions because he's not even on social media and he barely does interviews. And he never gloats about his successes so he doesn't rub it in and make everybody open their eyes to his master plan. In interviews, he works as hard as he can work at saying nothing. Even courtside after the game in Oklahoma City the other night, I can't remember a single thing he said because he just hides behind every cliche imaginable (laughs) to the point that you finally sit back after watching an interview and you say, that guy's a diabolical genius? <laughs> that guy is out LeBroning LeBron? Yep, it's that guy. But, but you don't realize it until it's too late. So in the end, as I look back at San Antonio, what have I always told you? For three straight years, he became my favorite player. And then he began to anger me and finally alienated me because I'm like, What is he doing? He quit on the Spurs. He failed to play 73 games two seasons ago, his final season in San Antonio, because he was Kaiser Sose and he had a master plan. He and his uncle were willing 
to force a trade, and they knew what was going to happen. It wasn't going to be to the West because you don't want to have to d- deal with him in oh, the exactly. West, right? Yeah. They knew it was going to be to the Eastern Conference, so they knew wherever they went, as long as it was a reasonable team, that they would have a chance mm-hmm. to pull something off right. in the East. Right. And they needed some luck. They needed some Golden State injuries. They needed the luckiest bounce I've ever seen on a game-winning <laughs> shot. But they pulled it off. They did. So he goes and wins a championship in, of all places, Toronto, yeah. which, which may never win a championship again. Yeah. And he's the finals MVP. And that gets him to complete and utter unrestricted free agency because the master plan is to go home. And then what does he do? He bamboozles, of all people, LeBron James. He sets him up. He pulls the wool over his eyes. And then he jerks the rug out from underneath him because LeBron's telling all of his media cohorts that that we got him. Everybody thought, everybody, widely, rampantly reported, he's going to the Lakers, Mm -hmm. right? And on the night of July 5th, we had one earthquake, a real one here, and then we had a second figurative earthquake. Kawhi Leonard is going to the Clippers? And then what did he do? Kaiser Sose, Kaiser Leonard, he, he quietly builds a better team than LeBron has in my estimation, at least a deeper team. You can argue the two at the top, mm-hmm. but it's he and Paul George and then a really deep team of dogs, man. They got some but they were, they were, ballers. The thing was, Skip, you have to understand, is that Ka- Kawhi went to a great situation. He went to a team in Toronto that was the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. So it wasn't like he right. went to a bottom feeder. No, but I mean, he made it the number one seed. No, no, no. They were number one the year before. Oh, you LeBron, mean, okay, yeah, I got LeBron you. LeBron beat him. They won 59 games the year yeah. before. He comes to a clip the Clippers. The Clippers took two games off Golden State. But remember, they yeah. gave up their best player for him, DeMar DeRozan. I, I'm not saying, yeah, I, yeah, I'm but, not a big fan, but they did. You know. Yeah, but and, and, and the Clippers, mm-hmm. Skip, for me, it was over for San Antonio mm-hmm. the moment they questioned him. It would have been very interesting to see how this plays out if they don't question him. And you remember, Skip, we talked about that. I said, Skip, is never going to be the same. He done. I said, I don't know Kawhi Leonard for him, a stack of papers. But let me tell you something about him by observing him. He has what we call an implosive personality. He would just let everything go, Jenny. Okay, mm-hmm. All right, yeah, sure. But then it... And then when he explodes, uh, okay. if there's nothing, they could have brought R.C. Buford. They could have brought Greg Popovich. They could have brought Tim Duncan. Mm-hmm. He had made his mind up. You question him. You don't believe when I tell you I'm hurting. Mm-hmm. He was done. I get that. It, it was... But, and not for Skip. We, this is something that is not new to basketball. It's always been like this in basketball, unlike any other sport, where the superstar controls the narrative. Magic Johnson got his head coach after winning a title. Paul Westhead got him up out of there. Now, what coach? Tom, as great as Tom Brady is, he can't get Belichick fired. As great as these quarterbacks are, they ain't get nobody fired. Mm. So this narrative about, oh, he changed, oh, he didn't. No, he didn't. LeBron James, see, here's the thing, Skip. Think about this here. LeBron James fulfilled his obligation in Cleveland. Now, last I checked, mm-hmm. the only person that I know outside of these corporations that owns a TV state, own a TV company, is Oprah. I ain't never seen no LeBron network. Now, people got mad at LeBron that a network put him on when he made his announcement. He fulfilled his obligation. He didn't demand a trade like Melo. Mm-hmm. He didn't demand a trade like some of these other players. He fulfilled his obligation. So LeBron is always, LeBron is he's giving these guys the dynamic that says, you know what? You don't have to die in a situation where they're not trying to win. Go out. Says, you know what? I won't out. Okay, but LeBron did it conventionally, out front, up front, yeah. in the open, yeah. every time. He, it was just conventional. Skip, he wanted to fulfill his obligation because he didn't want to, because look, we find fault with everything LeBron does. No, not we, you. And a lot of other people find fault with everything that he does. Can you imagine if LeBron James at any point in time had a demand of the trade in Cleveland the first time, or Miami, or Cle- Can you imagine, Jeannie, LeBron James demanding a trade? <gasps> it will stop. I can't really. It, it will stop. Well, he did last year. He did demand a trade. No, he didn't. To go get AD, no, he no, demanded. No, no, it. No, no, you know no, it, and no, I know no, it. Whoa, 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 whoa. And it was kind of heavy-handed. It was kind of ham-fisted. Did he like, demand? I'm just gonna did force. He, the, did he, I'm gonna bully the Pelicans into trading him. Did he demand that they go get Paul George? Mm-hmm. A simple no or a simple yes is all I need. You didn't know about no, it. No, 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 no. You didn't see it coming. But I think he knew. So, so in other words, as long as we don't know about it, mm-hmm. it's okay. Mm-hmm. 
<gasps> LeBron was trying to trade his whole roster for half the year. <laughs> he was. Skip. LeBron's going to trade you. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Not but fun. The, but the fact of the matter is, Skip, he was doing the same thing. Okay, we didn't know about it. We know about it now. So how do you feel about it? Mm. I, I told you how I felt. I, I was furious. I, I gave up on Kawhi Leonard because he quit with a quote-unquote thigh bruise. So he quit his way out of town, remember, with a whole year left on his deal. I was skip, let me ask you a question. This wasn't free agency. He didn't play out his deal. Right. He forced his way out of the deal. Let me ask you a question. If the Spurs had believed that his injury was as serious as he believed that it was, and Tony Parker, trying to be cute, doesn't say, my injury was 100 times worse, worse. call a meeting, put Kawhi on the hot seat, do you believe Kawhi would have still asked to be traded? I do. I do. I think it was a, a big master plan from the start. I don't. I, do I think not. this guy is holding the, the league like, you, you know, the first commercial we saw for New Balance where the, <laughs> the crown is swinging right. from his keychain? The whole crown. NBA is now swinging from his keychain. That's how he's I, I don't. It. I don't believe it. I believe master that once, plan. once they backed him into the corner, as a matter of fact, yesterday, Skip, I was at this event I was telling you about, and the guy walks up to me. He's, from, he's formerly from Colorado. I heard you making fun of my commercials. I'm the producer. I did all those commercials that no you see way. with Kawhi. I was like, yeah, they're still trash. I don't care what you say. Mm. He said, I'm a, I'm, a big, you're, I'm a big fan of yours. I said, yeah, good. Did he but say there's more coming? More I hope not. Because mm. it's two for two. More. And they're aimed directly at your man, LeBron. He is <gasps> openly challenging <laughs> LeBron James. No, hold on. Time out. Wait, wait for a second. This might be the first time in history that someone does a commercial and they aim the commercial at another person. Do you think Apple have commercials aimed at Google or they're trying to get look, look, uh, people... Wait a second, Shannon. Yes. It's not just at another person. It's at the face of the league. I thought you tried to sell a product. Mm. Oh, are you of trying the to league. Get the, are you trying to get the other... Pro are you tr hold on. You say he's the what? I thought you said Kawhi was the face of the league. I never said that. All right, he never was, and he never will be. I've always said LeBron was the face always of the league. Always will. And he's the best player in the league. Nope. Yeah. So let that sink in for a second, Jenny. I'm going to do a commercial. Mm -hmm. I'm going to spend millions of dollars to get the to get the, uh, uh, the person, the endorsee, and then I'm going to spend millions of dollars to get it on air. But I'm going to take a shot at somebody, not try to sell the product. You can do both. You can do a, you know, just a no. little, little sneak that in there. No? The end of the day, when you're selling product, the bottom line is to do what? Make money or take shots at people. Mm. What is it, Jenny? <sighs> Mm. Make some money. Uh, exactly. What's this latest commercial? What's the indication? No, no, but, but I don't care. I don't know. You should care. Because it's basically saying that he moves and the rest of the league follows. <laughs> that means I control the league. Who was and, I here first in the, in the West? Did LeBron, did, LeBron, did LeBron go that way and then come over here? Or did LeBron come to the West first? Yep. I'm glad you brought that up because that's why the one he dropped on opening night during the Lakers-Clippers opening night conflict it said he's exiting at Kauai Town. I mean, sorry, yeah, in Kauai Town, which is Los Angeles. So he's basically saying, this is my time and my town now. Actually, it's not. Right? And all I know is that we're talking to the guys yesterday. Mm -hmm. they, said, they said, the king. Well, what are they going to say? Well, no, 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 we are camera. No, 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 no. Yeah. I, I can understand if we're on camera. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They say, he's the man. Mm. They say, unk, he locked in. Mm, they say, unk. They say, unk. You know what? Back to the original quote. <laughs> yeah. You know who Kawhi Leonard or Kaize Leonard should mm. scare the hell out of? LeBron James. He, he is coming for LeBron in every way, shape, and form, and it's rich. quiet. Rich. He's the quiet assassin. Let me see a rich yeah. image. Quiet assassin. I'm just telling, I'm warning you. I'm actually trying to give you a heads up. You don't see it until it's too late, and I'm trying to give you pre-warning. You don't want nothing. You better have your eyes open. All I, I don't know if you've noticed this. Mm-hmm. But for, since the All-Star break, have you noticed anything about the GOAT? Huh. I, I've only noticed two Clippers-Lakers games in which Kawhi Leonard has taken over both fourth quarters and LeBron has disappeared hey, twice. Hey, what did that get him? Twice they he's hang, disappeared. Uh, so, disappeared in two fourth quarters. They hang the banner. So uh, are they hanging banner? Do you uh, tell them? Now, hold on. I'm just trying to wait. So when LeBron had this big moment, yeah. you're like, on a Sunday in February yeah. or a Saturday in, yeah. in, in January. Yep. So they, they're hanging banners for two regular season yeah. Are they hanging banners for back-to-back -back player of the month in ah! Western Conference? No, 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 you don't say that again. In, in, what was it, January and February? January and February. Hang February. that banger. No, no, banger. No, Go ahead. No, no, Do no. it. Had Do it. Done it a while. Yeah. We, uh, yeah. Last is the leg of the Kobe. Wow. We got so many player oh, of the nice. week 
they they go name that. That's gonna be the LeBron James Award. Who will the be NBA the NBA player? LeBron James Don't Award. Get ahead of yourself. Who will be the Player of the Month of June? That's all I care about. I know that's what June. you care about. And Sunday, we yep. care a lot about because we finally get to see so, it so again. I just want to know what's going to be excused then. What do you mean? Lakers win the title. It's because he had Anthony Davis. Mm. He brought everybody together. This guy, yada, 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 yada. It's going to be something. Because you won't go peacefully. You one of those guys won't go peacefully. Here <laughs> comes the mastermind assassin. Bath I got to check man. out this movie again now. Yeah. I'm like, this, I, I got to see it again. It's been a while. No mercy. But the 49ers really part with a QB who just led them to a Super Bowl. Well, multiple reports this week have indicated that, yes, they would move on from Jimmy G for a chance to pursue Tom Brady this offseason. And a new report says that Kyle Shanahan has, quote, reservations about Garoppolo's ceiling and overall decision-making. So, Shannon, do you see any truth to this? Look, uh, there's a little, my grandma used to say, boy, there's a little truth even in a lie. Huh. Um, and you hear a lot of times, Skip, you go around the league and guys like, yeah, we're, we're very happy with someone. But they're always looking to replace. They're always looking to upgrade that position. But, Skip, when I look at Jimmy Garoppolo, he hasn't started two full seasons. He's only started 29 career games, and he's 23-6 and six in those games. Mm -hmm. And he's taken a team to the Super Bowl. Yep. Uh, I, don't, I, I wouldn't be willing to trade a 28-year-old that just took us to the Super Bowl for a 43-year-old, and I don't really know what I'm going to get. Hmm. Because, Kip, at the end of the day, he's 43. I know what he's done in the past. I get all of that. But he's 43. And for me, the number one red flag. <clears throat> Some instances, red flags are good. I had a homeboy, Jenny, seeing this girl. He's like, Shannon, you don't notice all them red flags? I said, but red is my favorite color. So, no, no I don't know. Oh, side. my bad, my bad. Oh, is but, that? Oh, that no, makes so much more yeah, sense. Okay, Skip, <laughs> the red flag, the sirens or the bells or the whistles that would go off in my head, Coach Belichick is readily ready to move on easily. Now, what is Coach? The smartest coach in the NFL. He's normally he has a very good track record. Remember, he got off of uh, uh, Darrell Reeves. How could you let Darrell Reeves go? What do you do, Skip? No problem whatsoever. Coach Belichick has a very good record of getting off guys a year early, and that's what a lot of Bill Walsh famous. Hey. You always get rid of a guy a year early as opposed of a year too late. So that would be my number one red flag for me that would go up that Coach Belichick? Guys winning all these? So something, look, I, and I still believe, Skip, that Jimmy Garoppolo gives the 49ers a better opportunity. Now, I don't know how they're going to bring Emmanuel Sanders back, but I think they got some peace. They got to sign Armstead also, Skip. But I believe he will give them a better chance. I believe Jimmy G is only going to get better. We keep saying a ceiling. There's a difference between a ceiling and a 747 that's 40,000 feet up as opposed to a ceiling in a basement. So we got to we automatically assume, well, he can't be Aaron Rodgers. He can't be Peyton Manning. Okay. Every good quarterback that's won a Super Bowl isn't Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, or these all-time great skip. You can win a Super Bowl without being one of the top five quarterbacks of all time. And I believe they can win a Super Bowl with Jimmy G. I believe they're third and 15 on a defensive stop, Skip, from possibly winning that game. Now, we'll never know. Who knows? They say they're going to they, – it's yeah. easy to say, Skip, where well, we're going to go forward on fourth down. It's hard for me to believe that you're going to go forward on fourth and 15, Skip, in that area of the field. We'll never know. But I do believe Jimmy G is good enough to win them a Super Bowl. Mm. So, for Kyle, look, knowing Kyle a little bit, I mean, he, he probably like, damn, could have made that play here, you know – you got to be able to make that play there. Mm. But I'm not doing it, Skip. I'm not. I know you would, but I'm not. Mm. I would have done it yesterday, <laughs> but that's just me. <laughs> so you continue to use the argument that the greatest coach ever is signaling the league, I'm done with him. You should all be done with him. No, that's right? what I said. But I said it should, it, hold on. It should, didn't it raise flags that the Steelers got rid of a guy that went to eight straight Pro Bowls and was all pro and had the catch season? Didn't it raise red flags when the Raiders? Nobody saw those red flags? Nobody see those sirens? I'm going to say it again. You're saying that the greatest coach ever, yeah. quote, unquote, yeah. Trust is him. signaling the league, I'm finished with him, and you're, you're leaping to the conclusion, then they should all be buyer beware. Because you're saying 
If he's done with him, we should look the other way. Isn't that how it right? goes? So now, so you okay. know what? So every time a guy comes, well, such and such got rid of him, that should tell you something. So now, only Tom Brady should not have raised, so no flag should go off because it's Tom Brady. Stop it, Skip. Okay. I want to remind everybody watching <laughs> that this same greatest coach ever two years ago, two years ago yeah. said, I'm done with him. I'm going forward with Jimmy Garoppolo, my hand-picked savior, yeah. my successor. Yeah. I got him right yeah. here, yeah. right? Yes. And he informed his owner, I'm sorry, I'm done with, with Tommy, your son. Yeah. Okay. Right? Right. And the owner said, I'm sorry, you're not done with right. my son. <laughs> but that's different, Skip. That's a different okay. argument. No, it's not. Because Bill Belichick got proven wrong twice in a row. Twice in a row, because they go right to a Super Bowl and Tom throws for a record 505 playoff game yards and puts up 33 on Philadelphia. And then no matter how you want to slice and dice it, he goes through a playoff run the next year in which he torches the Chargers. What was he, 34 or 44 yeah. for 353? Mm -hmm. Just torched them. Mm -hmm. When you gave, you, you picked them to win that game, so you thought they had a credible shot to win at Foxborough. And, and then he goes into overtime at Kansas City and converts three straight third and tens. I've never seen anything like that before. And that's the same coach who benefited from an owner overruling him to keep that quarterback because Jimmy G's not completing three straight third and tens in overtime. He did, he did, he did two third and 16. Oh, stop it. And, and Just stop it. And then for what it's worth, Tom Brady did conduct the game-winning drive in the Super Bowl, in the fourth quarter, and that's the sixth time in six Super Bowl victories he pulled off the game-winning well, drive. Well, he should have conducted the okay. game-winning drive okay. because he had I, played I, like I, I want you up to, until that point. I want you to admit Bill Belichick was wrong and wrong twice in a row. No, absolutely. Yes. Hold, hold the thing. Yes. Let, okay. Dead wrong. No. How about this here? Let's just say for the sake of argument, because you said Tom Brady went to the Super Bowl, they lost, then he went back and they won. Let's say the 49ers, they went to the Super Bowl last year, they lost, they get back to the Super Bowl, and they win. Is he still wrong? Hmm. What's happened? <laughs> we, we don't know what's... Okay, then. Uh, all I know is that Jimmy Garoppolo, through his playoff stretch, this past playoff run, yes. in, in three straight fourth quarters, okay, he goes to grand total of 6 of 15 for 66 yards, no touchdowns, and one interception. In the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl, he goes 3 of 11 for 36 yards and an interception. Tom Brady has owned every fourth quarter of every Super Bowl he's ever played in, and you're telling me right here, right now, you won't take Tom Brady for two years over Jimmy Garoppolo? No. That's insanity. No, not at 43. You, you know and I know not at 43. you have to do it. No, you don't. This is a win-now league. I, I've covered it much longer than you even played in it, <laughs> and the one thing, the, the number one thing I've learned is – you have to maximize your immediate chance to win a Super Bowl because they come and go like that. And I know about a lot of teams that's taking quarterbacks, old quarterbacks that was great in their former locale, and it didn't work out so well was for Was any them. of those named Tom Brady? Well, Johnny Unitas was Johnny yeah. Unitas before Tom Brady was Tom Brady. Yeah. Okay. So he won one championship, right? He won a championship and a Super Bowl. Okay. Well, so, because if he wasn't really the starting quarterback the second time, the Baltimore one? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. He was pretty washed up by that. Point. No, no, he was washed up no. when he went to the, I think he went to the Rams. Didn't Earl Morrill do most of that damage that year? I think Earl, he did. He came in. I think yeah. Earl started the season. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's not Tom Brady. That's not what we're talking about. So, we're looking at the 49ers. That they're going to suffer from Super Bowl loser syndrome if you keep Jimmy G because he got damaged psychologically. You don't think he's taken a, a beating, a negativity so, look, beating? So let me ask you a question. So when Tom Brady lost Super Bowls, why did he get damaged? Because he's the GOAT. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Tom Brady... Wait, 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 wait a second. He, he had already won... Three when he lost And his he first got one. beat by Eli. Yeah, but he was 3-0. I mean, he already won three. Jimmy G, Jimmy G said, I lost to my yeah. homeboy. You yeah. lost to Eli and a guy that lost his starting job to Garner Mishu, Nick Foles. Mm. That's who you on your resume. Mm. Yeah. So rampant reporting yesterday that Kyle Shanahan has some reservations about Garoppolo's ceiling and overall decision making. Well, that's a duh to me. I mean, that's just, that's obvious. Well, how much ceiling? He, he showed you that again Let and again. Let me ask you a question. Well, how much ceiling you think Tom Brady got left at 43? 
the Super Bowl ceiling. He Look, uh, all he did against the Dolphins in the final regular season game, he conducts a 75-yard drive in which he completes four or five passes mm-hmm. to score he a touchdown, through a touchdown okay. pass. Yeah, he did that. And they're up 24 to 20 with three minutes left to get the two seed. He did what he always does. Okay. okay. I, I saw no okay. – did, did you see his arm strength in, in decline? The re- that was a regular season no. game. I saw that. Yeah. But can you – there was a game that were played okay. after the Miami right. game. Now, I need you to tell me what he did in that game, Jenny. Yeah. You know that game that they played on that Saturday right. night. Now, that's what I need you to tell me about. That was, those stats off. That was the same Titans team that had – Done a number on Baltimore. No, right? yes. no, we're not talking yes. about Baltimore. Right? With you, you see what you did? Mm-hmm. No, 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 Skip Bayless. I said I need you to tell me what Tom did against the Tennessee Titans on that Saturday night. Mm-hmm. That's what I okay. need. All right. A team that gave you gave a 14 points, Jenny. At 14, if a defense could hold an opponent to 14 points at home. You got to win that game. You got Tom Goat Brady, mm. and he can't get me but 14? So one game is going to completely disqualify Tom Brady as washed up, says whoa, Shannon Sharp. Whoa, whoa, whoa. See, there, right? you go. there you go, Skip. Yep. The body of word. Mm. Okay, what? so was his completion percentage 27th after one game or after 16? Mm. Was he 27th in yards per attempt? Shannon Sharp okay. says Tom Brady is washed up. <laughs> oh. That's what you keep saying, but then you say, well, I'm not saying that, yeah, you are. Hold on. Skip. Yeah, you are. Skip. It's okay. I'm saying you're seeing the decline. Just own it. Just, uh, Jenny, just because I got a car that can take me from point A to p- point B doesn't mean I want to drive it cross country. Yeah, but when that car has won a lot of Super Bowls, it was good. I had it for a number of years. No, it's no. Mint. It might mint. put it might put you Just down. It, it might put there. you. It might put you down too. Uh huh. What I, happens if it puts you down? I can't get past the fact that Tom would actually be older than Kyle Shanahan. If yeah. He years, mm-hmm. Which is. For some reason, crazy to me. That is just 40 versus 42. Tom's going to be 43. It's just a crazy thought. He, he has shattered the mold he, and will yeah, continue to. Yeah, he's going to. down in age. Okay. I mean, age is just Accept factor, it. Right? Embrace it. I have never seen, I have never seen, if, if I can just get, if I can just get like 20 people to cape up for Braun, like everybody caping up for Tom Brady, well, he needs Ezekiel Elliott at running back. He needs Julio Jones. He needs Kittle or, or, or Travis Kelsey at tight end. We need to give him the best of everything mm. and watch what he does. Mm. Well, hell, what quarterback couldn't win with all that? Mm. Somebody's starting to make excuses. Yeah, you! Yeah, yeah, you yeah, making yeah, excuses yeah. why he, uh-huh. why he uh-huh. stepped off that cliff last night. No year. mercy. Luka Doncic and the Mavs handed Zion's Pelicans their third straight loss in OT last night. At the ripe age of 21, Luka is already the sole owner of the Mavs all-time triple-double record with 22. He finished with 30 points, 70 boards, and 10 assists, and Zion finished with 21 and 6. This was Zion's first back-to-back of the season, and during overtime, he didn't check in until the 144 mark, which was interesting, and his Pelicans are now five games back of the eighth seed. We're now joined by Fox Sports NBA analyst Steven Jackson. Good morning. Good, morning. Good to morning. have you with us. Uh, Steven, what is your biggest take? Takeaway from last night? Um, the Pelicans still need to learn how to win. Mm-hmm. The only team, I think, as far as talent wise, they're going in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Um, I like Gentry, but I don't know when this team gets to the level of play that they need to get with their young guys and they grow the way they need to grow. I don't know if the Gentry is the coach. I'm not you, sure about You well could be right about that. No, I'm not yep. sure about that. But as a, as a young core team, they're going the right direction. Right. But Luca's too much. He's way ahead of his time. He understands the game, he, he, he has so much talent. I think with Luca, um, he has way more to his game than Zion. So you can't even compare them right really? now. Uh, way more. He shoots way more. He's a better playmaker. It just every his game. He's just not athletic as Zion, but he does everything better right now. Um, and they know how to win. They have a coach who knows how to win. Yep. The players around Luca are letting Luca lead the team. New Orleans don't even have a leader. Who's their leader? Right. They don't even have an identity. They're still I, trying to I find. I thought out. it was Drew Holiday. I thought he was. But the now veteran. Zion. Yeah, I know. I got now, it. Yeah, Zion and Bi yeah, the all the all stars. So even Ingram and, some and, nights. Yeah. Ingram's the leader some nights, and, and, and they don't. And Zoe needs to become the the leader. And know? it's good to see yeah. him go se- right. hit seven threes. It's yeah. good to see him start yeah. to come into his own. So he can be. He's starting to show that he he belongs in this league and he right. can help that team. So once they get an identity, and uh, and, and once you know Zion comes in full fo- uh, full fold and becomes the leader mm-hmm. of that team. They'll be all right. But right now, Dallas is a better team. They know how to win, and they have an identity, and they're going somewhere. <laughs> Bigger takeaway. Luca. My name is Luca. Triple double. Mm. <laughs> Live on the second floor. He live upstairs, Skip, from Zion. You know some of the weirdest music <laughs> in the history of music. <laughs> I think you might have seen it before, but I've been telling you this. I told you two months ago, Luca. Skip, look. 
To close out the game in overtime, seven points, two or two field goals, two or two from the free throw line, four rebounds and an assist. 30, 17, and 10. Now, here's the guy that's going to end up probably having 200 triple doubles if he can have a long, a long career. Let's give the dude special. I told you, I told you, you know, was special. I'm, I'm going to save. <laughs> Please, you know, yeah, I can't wait to hear you. Yeah, miss five more free throws. But I, I, I don't worry about that. Don't, don't get me started on how not special. First he of all, is. Skip, he wants the guy to have everything. He wants the guy no. to shoot. Listen, you want a guy to shoot 50% from the floor, 90% from the free throw line, and 40% from the three. Skip, that only occurs like once. Uh, Steph gets gets had a game had a, a season like that. Uh, Larry Bird, KD, Skip, those are anomaly seasons. Luka is a high volume misser yeah, from he, the three point line I and the free throw line. Book it because it's right here. But I, th this is what is something I want to show you. You say you like closers. Mm -hmm. You like guys in the mm -hmm. club in the clutch. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, DJ, we got a track, Skip. I've been working on some music last you know last night within the lab. Mm -hmm. Hey, can we pull that? Look at this, Skip. This look what he's doing. Now step I, back. I, I saw Bam. The game. Yep. You, can, you, mm -hmm. you, you want to close that? Woo, Jerry Favors. Mm -hmm. um, oh, you're cool. late. What's your favorite flavor? That was rare. Uh, uh, look, it was. Hey, you do that right now. Look, yep. at this, look at this. Look at this, Skip. Mm -hmm. mm, Patty. Boy, do seen, that to it. Do you know how many of those he's missed uh, uh, already? Uh, he missed that one. Yeah, he has. Uh, now get, look at this, Skip. Watch this pass right here. Ah, yeah. oh, the pick and roll at the top. That's Luca. What he, that's what he does. Kristoff. I give you that. He better add something to his game for playoffs because he, mm -hmm. he ain't been going right too well. You know, they take away stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, now this is Drew Holiday. You like Drew Holiday, yeah. Skip? Mm -hmm. You like Holiday? He, oh, he cooked him. Ooh! But, but Drew took the challenge. How many players going to actually Oh, look at Drew Holiday. I like that. Oh, no. Oh, what? Mm. That, that was mixtapes. Ooh, Skip! That was mm. mixtapes. Hey, Luca, Luca the professor. Yeah, that's the move professor be doing on the N1 tour. Mm. Got him going. That man, the real deal, Skip. Have you been watching his new teammate, Kristaps <laughs> Porzingis? I, Have I, you been watching what uh, he's doing? He's seven feet, three <laughs> inches tall. Yeah. And he is appropriately nicknamed a unicorn because that's what he is because I've never seen anything like that before. Right. He goes 34 and 12 last night. He's making mid-range jumpers. He's making long-distance threes. And he is doing that with his new partner where he's just diving to the basket in ways I haven't seen him dive because suddenly, I don't know, he found a weight room in Dallas? I don't know. His body <laughs> looks way different than it used to look, look in different. New York. And he's playing with a new, I'll go so far as to say physicality because I never thought I'd put that word in the same sentence with Porzingis. But there's some physicality going on with him as a shot blocker and a rim diver. Because right. you saw him dive and slam with authority like he knew what he was about Well, that's the do. 21st century Mikhail and Bird. Okay. Well, it could be. And don't ever put don't do Luca that. in don't do the that. Larry Bird <laughs> sentence again. Because I thought you loved Larry Bird when you were a kid. I, what you mean? You thought I did? Yeah, that well, was my I favorite thought, player. Well, then you wouldn't put Luca in the same sentence. I had all the sentence. posters. Had the jersey. Because had we're going to get struck by lightning if you do he that coming. again. Skip, yep. he coming. He you got to realize when Larry Bird got to the NBA, he was 20. 23. Larry Bird wasn't doing this at 20. Nah. So stop playing with him, Skip. With Nobody a, was. With a minute and 29 left in overtime, this game was tied because Zion tied it. And my biggest issue with this young basketball team is it's all over the map right now with shooting and whose turn it is. Because Brandon Ingram unfortunately made the all-star team. It was the worst thing that could have happened to this young he team. He deserved to make because, it. Well, I, okay, fine. <laughs> And now he's got to live up on a nightly basis. No, he can't get my shine. I, I got to get all the shots up. So I watched once again last night, three starters take more shots than Zion Williamson took. Three. And I watched Zion do what he always does in the fourth quarter in overtime, which is make just about every shot he takes. Get to the free he, throw, he, huh? he only took five shots in the fourth quarter in overtime last night. He made four. How can he only get five shots up? But Skip, he's not a, because he. Here's the thing: you got to realize he's not a volume shooter. Well, he should be. That's up to <laughs> Alvin Gentry just be. to say, "I'm sorry, guys. We are going to feed the beast yeah. when it's time." He is your closer. I've told you he's Derrick Henry of the NBA, where he just pounds you into submission down the stretch to where a Kleba, who was who started last night, just to bang with it. Yep. By the fourth quarter, Kleba's like. I got to do this again? <laughs> this man knows what it feels like yeah. down in the post when you got that big caboose just ramming you and ramming you. And I ain't until, never dealt with nothing that. Not, not like that. <laughs> because he's he's powering up through you, and it hurts, man. I mean, yeah. after a while, it takes a, a psychological as well as a physical toll on you. So, I, again, 
With 343 left in the game, he comes back in the game and he doesn't touch the basketball down the stretch of regulation. You just can't do that. The, the, again, B.I.'s on a crazy hot streak, but he just keeps shooting and missing. And then Lonzo thought he was on a hot streak, and he keeps shooting, and he almost shot an air ball and missed two late threes. And it finally comes down to Derek Favors jacks up a three with an air ball at a moment when they could have tied the game again. Okay? So what what is what are you doing? What's your plan? I don't see any plan. No, no, no plan, Skip. You're absolutely right. Like, you know you have to go to go to, go to Zion. He is your go-to guy. He, he's your guy. And when you, when you that's why it goes back to not knowing how to win. Right. I agree. And Gentry, you have to put some type of system in with these young guys because you are, they say you're an offensive coach, right? Right. You're yeah. supposed to be an offensive yeah, Cole, coach. Cole. You got to put these guys in position and let guys know who's your go-to guy, what you expect from this guy. What You can't have all these young guys coming down shooting just any shot they want to because that's what's going to happen at the end of the game. Just like Just like, whose turn is it to jack it up? So what are we going to do about that defense? Now, they gave up 139 to the Timberwolves without Carl Anthony Towns. They just gave up 127. So what we keep on talking about, okay, who's going to get the shot? They scored enough, but they can't. they're not stopping anybody. Yep. Well, in one of the timeouts, Alvin Gentry said, uh, somebody's got to guard the kid named Curry because his last name's Curry, right? Yeah. And when you got that last name, you can probably shoot it yeah, pretty let well. It go, right? let him go. How do they can't guard everybody? Okay. But they begin to He can't guard. You know they begin to do. <laughs> but, but, but listen, listen. When you a defender, it's going to happen in the NBA. Okay. You're going to get shaken. They're going to cross over. But we we respect the guys that take the, that take that I challenge. I like that challenge. Yeah. You, but you remember what he did the other night? You know what he had the other night? He got that 40 piece on him. Yeah, it happens. And then he came back and got a triple dub. It happens. Oh, go. Happens. Oh, go back. <laughs> it happens. He back, Skip. Mm. And on Luca. And, and somebody, uh, Seth Curry said, Luca, he reminded him of uh, old European brawn. That's what they called him over there. The <laughs> European <laughs> brawn. Well, I yeah. mean, that's... How can you not call him that right He now? coming, Skip. He might not be as athletic as Braun, but what Skip, he's doing... Skip, he coming. He's yeah, he's, he just turned 21. Luke is special. He mm. just turned 21. Zion's at 19. And he has the most triple doubles in Mavericks history. Mm. It's 14th Good for of the him. season, too. Yeah. I'm saving all my <laughs> thoughts because in just a minute here on the show, we're going to do who would you take going forward, Luca or Zion. Mm-hmm. And I got a mouthful for you. Well, you and I believe Steven Jackson might just have a mouthful for you right now because mm-hmm. you brought it up at the end of a discussion yesterday a- about Trey Young versus Trevor Ariza, and you said, wonder what Steven Jackson or Matt Barnes would have done if they had gotten nutmeg by little yeah, Trey. Man. What would Steven have done? I wouldn't have. I would have, you know, that's my little brother. I, I love him, but I would have probably picked him up by his neck and threw him in the crowd. You don't. Oh, listen not, to that. Not do that. Yeah, that. not gonna do that. Threw him you, in the crowd. You, hold up. you <laughs> was on a team when Manu Ginobili did it. To who? Manu used to. Manu started that move. It was passes. No, I don't care. You can't throw the ball between the legs. See, this, it's, it's a difference. See, it's difference? a difference. It's a difference. Hey. If you look at the game, you see a lot of guys come up a pick and roll, and the guys stand there and they just bounce pass through the leg. Yeah. But not throwing it through your legs, go and catch it and shoot it. Why that's so that's an old Rucker move. Let, exactly. A lot of fights have started on the blacktop because of that move. And it goes right. Guess what? And you <laughs> yeah. already know. It, yeah. see, Man, Trevor did what he was supposed to do. Trevor, Trevor made us proud. No, no. <laughs> Trevor, did, Trevor did that to what's the he did that to uh, uh to Trey Young, cause Trey a rookie and he's small. He the, He's the what, second year. If he'd have caught what? Who? Name somebody. Me. Trevor uh, Trevor do it to you too. <laughs> I tell you, hey, guess what? <laughs> and guess what? And I'd have been like Steven Jackson. I got suspended for the last 30. Cause boy, I'm took that ball and hit it dead upside down. Yes, sir. You know the re- see, Trey ain't gotta do that. Why you everybody in that arena ready to fight for Trey? Thank and guess, you. Everybody. And guess yeah. what? He just pulled the same move off on DeAndre Ayton the next night. Yeah. And got a hand one. Yeah. That's his move. But when you that small, just think about it, Stack. He been that small his whole life. Yes. That's the only way he can be able to get around the guys. Well, that's, li- you gotta be talented to do that. Yes! And he gonna get mad because a man did that this to him. This man would have grabbed him around the <laughs> neck and thrown him I in the third him. row. That's the ultimate, ultimate yeah. embarrassment in NBA, yeah. dog. Let somebody throw it through his leg. I told you. Throw it through his leg. You did say you. exactly yeah. that. You said, Thank what you. is Steven? me well. Yeah. No, yeah. I said, if Trevor Reza had done that to you, you put the ball between his leg and he forearm shipping you to oh, your chair. Oh, nah, man, Trevor can kick that. We fighting right there. <laughs> Thank you. Not what I said. Don't even no, there. you were going the other way. No. You were, going, you were saying those guys would have been okay No, 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 no. I was saying if they had done that, to him. See, I'm looking at it from the perspective. If I got the ball, if Stax got the ball, he puts the ball between the guy's leg and the guy forearm him to the chest. He gonna be like, okay, I'm cool with that. 
He, but he's not going to do it. Yes, he, he's not going to nutmeg somebody. Yeah, I was. Uh, I didn't have that skill. <laughs> but if you could, I didn't have that skill. So if I guess what, if you're a taller guy, don't dunk on me. Yeah. Because yeah. if you're taller, man, don't dunk on me. Yeah. And because guess what you do doing? You dunk on somebody, you be looking all be. Do it yeah, all yeah. this because everybody, little man, little yeah, man. everybody rocking the baby, <laughs> rock, rock the baby on everybody. Yeah, there's a lot of. Rock so I'm gonna see what Trevor Reed's gonna do with Ruff when Ruff rock the baby on him. Mm. Let's see what he do then. Okay, Steven, thank you. More of the story. You're not gonna mess with me. No mercy. So according to Bleacher Reports, Mike Freeman, there's a chance that Amari Cooper could be the highest paid receiver in football next year. And teams around the league increasingly believe he'll be playing elsewhere because Dallas won't be able to keep both him and Dak. Freeman added, quote, if Cooper tests the waters, there will be a frenzy to sign him. He's viewed as not just a great receiving talent, but one of the best pure talents in the sport. A lot of praise. Mm-hmm. Shannon, do you agree? I do, Skip. <clears throat> um, he's very technically sound. He's as good a route runner there he is. The only, que- the only p- questions that people have ever had about Amari Cooper, Skip, is the consistency. Because you'll see stretches where he'll go 150, 175, maybe even 200. And then you'll finish, you'll see him finish like he did this season where he doesn't get over 50 yards in a game. That's the thing. But, Skip, you know what happens when you hit free agency? Someone will overspend. If they lost Amari Cooper, it would cripple their offense. Because you look at Dak numbers before Amari, you look at his numbers since he's gotten Amari, and he's a different quarterback. <clears throat> now, maybe they believe Michael Gallup is ready to take that next step, Skip, and be a true number one. But you know, it's a lot easier said than, oh, man, he ready to be a number one. No, Amari gets Gilmore. Amari gets the Pat Peterson, while Gallup gets the second and third guy. It's a big difference going from two to one. Because now you're the focus of everybody's attention. Skip, I, I don't believe you can, they can let this happen. Um, and that's the risk that you run when you let guys get to the end of their contracts. Because he played up on his option, which was, what, $14, $15 million. So you know he's expecting Michael Thomas money. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Michael Thomas got what he got, Skip. He had another year left on his deal. This dude's about to be totally free. And people like, and this is what I always explain to people. Free agency isn't about being good. It's about being free. And when you're free and you get people to bid on you, well, this team might not, all you need is one team, Skip. All you need is one team to say, you know what? He worth 19 million. And there you go. Skip, I don't believe, maybe they can transition him, but I don't believe they can let him go to the free agent market, Skip. Because if they do, they're going to lose him because they can't win a bidding war for the simple fact they haven't signed Dak. And this is why you can't let two guys, you let two of your most important guys, Skip, get to the end of the contract. Trouble. Trouble. Hmm. Which is all you want for my team. (laughs) So you you have to take with a thousand grains of salt (laughs) everything my partner (laughs) says about my Dallas Cowboys. He wants the salary cap wrecked because he wants us to overpay for everybody. No. Everybody. It's a weird we're cap strapped with overpaid, underachieving players everywhere. Jerry, right? you always tell me yeah. Jerry will figure it out. Mm-hmm. Well, I believe Jerry will figure this guy out. And this guy is uh um, tough to figure out. Skip. He's tough, man. He got a little Kawhi in it. He's got a little uh <laughs> I don't know. He's got some missing intangibles in there somewhere because I am very conflicted, but I also believe heart of hearts, he wants to stay in Dallas because he loves this quarterback. Yeah. And I would not underestimate how much he loves playing as a Cowboy in Dallas for Dak Prescott. So I believe there will be some hometown discount taken here just because of the connection he has with that quarterback as opposed to the lack of connection he had with the coach and the quarterback in Oakland before. He he went to heaven. He have, a better, he have a better connection than Philly. Mm-mm, nope, he would not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a better connection than yeah. walking yeah. to him. You would yeah. love it. It gets cold and lonely in Philadelphia. It don't get lonely. Yeah. What would you be getting lonely? Cold and lonely. <laughs> Bye, dog. So my biggest issue with Amari Cooper is that he showed everybody <laughs> last year it's all about home sweet home because he ain't no road warrior. <laughs> He's got no road warrior in him because – he lost me three times when they lost games, starting with the one that you loved the most, which was at the Jets when they lost. Oh, they lost 20, that game? Yeah, 24 to 22. What happened? If we could see what happened, Amari winds up 
catching one ball for three yards. And that's the incompletion that somehow he got hurt on that play. And so it's early in the game. We still got like, this is early in the first quarter. And he just goes and stands on the sideline the rest of the game and, and walks around. Then what you go, want him to do? And here's New England. He catches no balls in the New England game and winds up quitting and just went to the sideline and said, no moss, I can't do it anymore. Stephon Gilmore's too good for me. He catches no balls. Oh, Bob and Ron Gilmore. Narrow loss there. And then we go to the Eagles at the end of the year, and he gets subbed for down the stretch. The final play of the game, the last, actual last couple of plays of the game, he's, he's just over on the sideline watching because he got benched. He got benched. This is going to be the premier receiver free agent who took himself out for no apparent reason of the Jets game. I don't know. He was something nicked. He came right back against Philly at home the next week. Remember the Sunday yeah. night game? And he caught 106 yards worth of yeah. balls. Was he okay? I guess he was yeah, just fine. Yeah, right? we're talking about it's easy. Okay. Hey, old Dak, old yeah, Dak was on the sideline. Jim, you well, missed that. We're talking about it's easy. Easy. Right, it's easy money. Okay. So that guy who just stormed past the Eagles at home, then he goes up to New England and, and he just says, I, I can't do it anymore. He's too good for me. You ever seen a premier free agent say, he's too good for me? No. But was, okay. How am, I, how am I supposed to defend that? Well, Skip, but you, we've also seen free agents that's less than Amari Cooper get boatloads of money. Okay. I got it. So, to your point, the day he walked in the door in Dallas at midseason, not this past year, but the year before, mm-hmm. Once they the, – the first big game that they played was at Philadelphia. And, uh-huh. and he didn't do much in that game, but my quarterback took off because he had a bona fide, legit, trustable number one mm-hmm. receiver who at least attracted some double coverage or, or some concentration from a defensive coordinator that allowed others to get – Well, how about this, Skip? He could be where he was supposed to be. He could run the route yeah, tree. he could do the route how about do, How about do okay. that? There we go. I'll give you that. So what happened? Once he walked in the door over those last – eight games plus the postseason that year. Dak led the whole NFL in completions. I told you he changed life in Dallas. Yeah! And Dak was first in catchable passes over the last half of the year. I agree. He was third in completion percentage, and he, he's even third in air distance. So there was no more dink and Dak because he had somebody he could actually throw it down the field. Hold up. Dak, you hearing that? Yep. That sounds like $40 million to me. Mm. That sounds like $40 million to me, Jenny. Mm. What that sound like to you? Skip, read those numbers again so Jerry mm. can hear them. No, no. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was two years ago. Okay, and yep. he was even better this year. That's what you told me. Okay, so help me out here. This yes. is the premier receiver free agent. Yes. At home last year, he caught 52 balls. On the road, he caught 27. Is that good? Not really. Nah, it Receiving ain't good. Receiving yards at home, 869. Road, 320. 869 to 320. I can just keep on going. Receptions for first downs. At home, he had 40 of those. On the road, he had 14. Yeah. I can just keep going. He was a disaster on the road. So you don't want so, him. So you got to pay him for eight home games. Yeah, so you don't right? want him. I, I got to have him because oh. I'm stuck. But is he Michael Thomas? Stop it. No. Really? He's no, not Michael know, Thomas. No, no, no. But yeah. he's going to get paid like he's going to get paid more than Michael Thomas. I don't know about that. I just don't know if he'll what take more than Michael Thomas to stay in Dallas. No, what? what? Yeah. See, there you see, Jenny, yeah. you see? More discount? You, you, no, yeah, exactly. More discount. Everybody taking a discount. Yeah. Everyone wants We're going to add Cowboy. a game, add a playoff game, but y'all take less money. What the hell you, what, so what? Mm. So why you signing the CBA if you're going to take less money? Mm. Mm. That's a good point. Well, you, you, you can only pay him for eight games, though. Oh, right? okay. Seriously, it's an eight-game contract. Wait, wait, I don't, you, you know so what? They, they shouldn't even take him on the road next year. So you just know leave what? him home. Just let him, go, just let him go on the field. We'll walk it to him. Mm. Walk it to him and show you how to use him on the road. Oh, really? Yeah. That'd be kind of painful. He'll, uh, he'll feel like he's living on the road. No, His walk, home games will feel like road games. You know walking to him more accurate than that. Yeah. Oh, stop. You, you can't know. open that it's right not now, more accurate Shannon. than that. More accurate. I don't know. You mean more, more accurate. headlights? Wins. Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, walk it to him. Uh, Who was in the playoffs this year? Oh, stop it. Who made it to the playoffs? I don't know how. I knew. Because yeah. yeah, they're in your division with the Cowboys, and I told yeah. you that was going to happen. Mm. Uh, it was like the least of the least in that division. Okay, they might have some needs at receiver, though, the Cowboys. Did you guys see Dez was at the game last night? Mm. He said he was ready. He's sitting courtside at the Mavs game. He said, I am ready. Sign him up. I took a break, and I'm mentally prepared. Hold up. Oh, you want Dez back? Sign him up. No, just yeah. so you know, Dez oh, is ready. No mercy. Luka Doncic and Zion Williamson may be the future of the NBA, but Luka has the bragging rights at the moment after his Mavs finished their regular season sweep over Zion's Pelicans and handed them their third straight loss last 
night. Well, before the game, ESPN released their top 25 players under age 25 based on future potential, and Luca was ranked first with Zion coming in at two. And I know that that probably doesn't sit too well with the guys sitting next to me. So, Shannon, do you see any truth to this? All truth. Choo-choo! Runway train, Luka Doncic. It just left the uh, NBA station. I hope you got more than that. <laughs> yeah, man, you, you ought to stop. You need to be ashamed of yourself. Now, you know this man's special. He just turned 21 last week, Jenny. 28 and a half. So, basically, I'm going to round that up. We do half, five, we round it up. 29 points, nine rebounds, nine assists. Stop mm. it, Skip. You, he can do everything. Mm. Great feel for the game. He can do everything better than Zion Williamson. He can score more. He can rebound better. Let that sink in. Mm. For a uh, non-athlete, he, I mean, mm. he, he ain't jumping up. I mean, he probably jumped about like a what? 20 <laughs> Pretty probably got a 10-inch vertical. The Thank you for saying that. Because <laughs> he told him, Skip, don't throw me no lob. He said, don't throw me no lob. I can't, I can't catch no lob. Rebound, assist, Skip, he's running the team. There's no question. It's him, Skip, it's not even clear. He's like, he's just... I'm not saying Zion isn't a natural leader because he can lead, I, I think, because his personality, because he loves the game, and guys are going to follow him. But when you talk about uh, of a team that says, okay, you're the guy, like Magic Johnson, mm -hmm. okay, like LeBron James, he's going to be cut, he cut from that cloth. Mm -hmm. Yeah! It's over for you, Skip. Got me a new guy. Got me a new Larry Bird. I've been waiting 30 plus years. You've been Bird. waiting. I got me a, th I've been waiting. For 30 years to find me a new Larry Bird. Mm, absolute blasphemy. They don't, bl uh, <laughs> they don't blasphemy, mm -hmm. Skip. But here's the thing. Skip says he, Luke, Luke is high volume. True, he's number one in usage, but he's also number four in PER. Now, you love PER because you tried to use that yesterday with old Giannis. Mm. Giannis is number one in PER. And LeBron is 10th. Uh, number 13 is Zion. Mm. Skip is, is Luca. You're going to be able to, this, this guy right, this guy right here, He's the real deal, and I tried to get you to get on early. See, it's like a stock, Skip. What I try to do is I try to get you to get into, invest in this stock early before it's too late. But you don't let it now. Luca done left the building. You really? can't get on this yeah, You can't get on this train with me. Mm. Yep. Close the door on you. I'm about to derail your train because <laughs> I'm about to unleash <laughs> Tell on us. Your, your man, Luca, your new man. <laughs> jumped on this bandwagon a little too quickly, and it's about to run over you. That's what's happening. Okay, let's frame this with the fact that Zion Williamson is 19 years of age and has played all of 17 NBA games, yep. while Luca got to play pro basketball in Europe because he played for Real Madrid, yeah. and they won the EuroLeague Championship with him as the driving force. I'll give you that. Sure. And, he the MVP. and he was the MVP of the regular season Thanks. and of the what they call their final four. But yep. he, he's way more experienced than this baby is named Zion. Oh, baby, is, huh? Well, he's an NBA baby. Okay. You know it, okay. and I know it. <laughs> but let's look what the baby has already accomplished in just 17 games. I told you earlier, since his debut, he scored the third most points in the whole league in the fourth quarter in overtime. That's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. He is averaging in the paint 17.6 points per game. No rookie has done that since they started keeping the stat in 1996. That's more than Blake. That's more than Tim Duncan right. as a rookie. Wow. Well, we got to go back to Shaq because yeah, I think Shaq, than... would probably, Shaq would probably have, but Shaq came okay. in 92. Okay, well, I'm not sure he was more than this, but we, we don't know that yeah. one. And then we get to this stat. This is the case closer. Going into last night, Zion was averaging 24 points a game in under 29 minutes a game. That hasn't happened in the NBA since 1951. What he is doing is extraordinary because his strength, which is scoring in the paint, is greater than any strength that Luka has. No. Luka's got lots of jack-of-all-trades. Yes! On, but they're, they're a little shaky because if we start to look harder and harder at what Luka doesn't do, he's a 32% three-point shooter. That's horrible. What's that, Young? That's horrible. Well, he hasn't. He, he made his first four in a row in his first game, and since then he hasn't shot very many, and I don't know why. I That's do. on Alvin Gentry. You do know why. Yeah, I don't know. But he's got a sweet little tight, compact stroke that works from the free throw line and from the three-point line. It works better than horse, but yeah. not in the NBA game when yeah, guys will be jumping at you. 
So let's start with the fact that Luka has missed the six most threes in the NBA. He's missed the fifth most free throws because he can be a liability at the free throw line. He missed five more last night. He was eight of 13. That's LeBron-esque. He is like LeBron. When does Zion turn into Steph Curry from the free throw line? And and he also, Luka, averages the fourth most turnovers. But here's this showstopper of the 20 highest volume three-point shooters, those who have attempted 400 or more. Luka, special. He's dead last. He's special. Yeah, he's so special that he's bringing up the very rear of that train. Way to go, Luca! And guess what he ranks in defensive win shares? 140th because he plays little to no defense. You like that? Oh, you yeah, know that's what? special I to gotta, me. I got to stand for you. And, and time out. I'm going. You gave me the floor. <laughs> okay, go ahead. That first time that the Lakers played the Mavericks, remember that at Dallas? Yeah. What did your man Kyle Kuzma just blurt after the game? We were just feeding whoever Luca was guarding because it's a liability. Yeah. Where, is, who's Luca on? Oh, he's on Kuz. Give it to Kuz. He can score. Well, well, you, Way to go. And remember what started happening in that game? What did Dwight do to your man, Luka? He's special. Special. He bullied him. Just knock him out of the game. Remember he just jacked him in the jaw and yeah, knocked him out yeah, of the game? Yeah, but he had a concussion, He Kim. is bullyable. He is soft. He is frail. He is skinny. He's, there's no physicality to him. And I can't believe that the great Shannon Sharp has leaped aboard a, a bandwagon of a little frail guy. Yep. He can pass it. He's not a great passer. He's a good one. But come on, 32%. He's, he's only a 76% free throw shooter. That's kind of LeBron-esque. That's better than, really? that's better than come you. Come on. If, if you told me he was a 90%, 40%, I'd say, okay, he's, he's on his way. I don't know if you knew this. Really? Did you know this? That... A guy that has a 72-inch vertical mm-hmm. jump gets his shot blocked the fourth most in the NBA. Mm. Did you know that? Zion Williamson, mm. with all that leaping ability, mm. gets his shot blocked the fourth most in the NBA. Boy, Why is that? But boy, he can get to that free throw line. And really, my guy yeah. get to the free throw line, too. Mm-hmm. And be making them 76%. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, now, we well, got to pick that up. I mean, you know. 76%. That's special. Skip. Special. He's the, missed the fifth most free throws in the whole league. Oh, Luca, skip. Ooh. He's only 21 mm. and in charge of a team. Mm. There ain't very many 21-year-olds that's been in charge of a team. Go, I can only think of a handful of them. Hey. I'm thinking Magic. I'm thinking uh, uh, Goat James. Yep. How many 21-year-olds, Skip, has been in charge of a team? Give me Zion Williamson because you can already see he is the ultimate wrecking ball. This league has never seen anything like this before. Okay, Skip, you He's going to Derrick Henry this league okay, let me and just submission. Okay, let me ask you a question. You say you're going to build mm-hmm. around him. Yep. What are you going to put in place? Mm. What you, how are you going to build around him? What are you going to build in place? First of all, I, I need a coach who will focus upon the abilities, the nuclear capabilities of Zion Williamson. And I'm going to get him in advantageous positions right and left where he can just do damage because he's ambidextrous. No one has ever attacked the rim with the quickness and the spring this kid has. My guy. I've never seen anything like it before. My guy. Hey, I can be, you yeah. build a ride and what you need. You need yeah. shooters? Okay, yeah. get some shooters. Okay. Do Zion need shooters? Well, what they went and got was they went and got the unicorn with him, and that's a sweet yeah. fit. That will work. If you give him the unicorn, he's going to do a lot of damage. Y'all got a unicorn. Angels. Y'all got Brandon Ingram. Yeah. And y'all got Lonzo. Yeah. Well. Uh, what they got is they got Zion. And you know and I know he's going to take – however far the Pelicans can go, that young man, Already. that baby is going to carry them. I mean, I mean both of them just yeah. go by one name, yeah. Zion, Luca. Mm-hmm. Let that see again, Luca. It is kind of cool. Luca. We've yeah. talked about that. When you're a one-name guy, you've already made it, and they're young. That would be saying. He, he came into the arena the other night. Yeah. My name is Luca. Mm-hmm. Skip, it's over for you. I, I ask you to get I on the. I cannot <laughs> believe that you're on this bandwagon. And he of is this guy. Literally, That's he's left guy. the building oh, on this bandwagon. Oh, Luca for real. Yeah, boy, he's he scares me. Ooh. He's so physical. It's just a matter of time. He's a bad man. triple dub. I say yeah. within the next three years, he ever triple dub. Yeah, well, way to go. That's where you're at. Yep. Not even hard. Do what you're gonna do. Mm. I have Already an all-star. This is gonna be a Watch fun dynamic the for well, the next couple of years. They're gonna rough him up and take him right out of the game in the playoffs. No mercy. While Tom Brady's future remains in limbo, the rumor mill continues to turn. And according to ESPN's Jeff Darlington, at least eight teams are monitoring Brady as he prepares to become an unrestricted free agent. And four of those teams would quote sign him right. Now, so Shannon, do you believe this? Sure, why only four though? Why not all eight? 
Let me ask you a question, Jenny. Of that four, how many of them named New England Patriots? Because that was important. Hey, that wasn't important, Jenny. Okay, okay. Uh, you got a cold? Oh, uh, you know, a little cold, a little, a little chilly. I'm just trying to figure well, it out. Cold in here there are today. four teams. <laughs> that, is any of them named the New England Patriots? Absolutely not. Okay, then. Mm-hmm. So, but we need to stop this notion. No, we need to start it. Let me ask you a question. Of the teams that are interested in Amari Cooper, should he hit the mark? Are they willing to sign him right now? Yes. Byron Jones, are they willing to sign him? So this notion about this being unique to Tom Brady, if those guys have identified a player, be it a D lineman, O lineman, linebacker, doesn't matter the position. If a team was identified that guy, they would sign him right now. But they got to wait until the 18th. Right, Skill Bayless? Mm. So they're trying to make this all unique. Oh, they would sign Tom Brady tomorrow. And they would sign uh, a Byron uh, Jones. They would sign Amari Cooper. They would – Jadavian Clowney. He going to be on the market. Mm. You think a team would sign Jadavian Clowney right now, Skip Bayless? Well, I believe they would. Mm. So this is not unique to Tom Brady. Mm, yes, and we need is. to stop making things about, oh, Tom, Tom. Tom ain't got nothing on lock. Mm. He got four teams, maybe four teams, held hostage. Mm. <laughs> Other than that, it's going to be business as usual. He's got you on lock <laughs> right here, right now. The great Shannon Sharp about 20, 25 minutes ago on this <laughs> very television show. What I say? He said that Tom Brady fell off the cliff last year. That was your conclusion. He fell off the cliff. So four teams are vehemently disagreeing with the Hall of Famer, Shannon Sharp, if this is true. I, I don't think it's true because I, I believe there are 10 or 12 teams no. on hair trigger who would sign him if, if it were legal to right here in the next hour. If you said he's open for bids in the next hour, I believe 10 to 12 teams would bid for him. And I gave you 13 last week, and I think some are just laying in the weeds. And I'll, the, the weeds teams right now are like Bears, Colts, Box, maybe even Giants were laying in weeds. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're laying in the weeds, and they would jump right into the fray no, given no, no, the no, no, opportunity. No, 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 no. No. But right now, there are the obvious ones, such as the Chargers and the Titans Raiders. and the Raiders. Mm-hmm. And then I'm not sure who that fourth one. It might even be the 49ers might well, be the most obvious team. I'm talking about, yep. hold on. And I didn't even mention my Dallas Cowboys, hey. who are still out there with a big problem, a quandary at quarterback. If, if, it's, right? if, if, if it's not about the money, the team that you're with aren't one of the four teams, not one of the eight. See, I believe, I believe Seattle would like to keep Jadavian Clowney, but it's going to be out of, you know, the torn price point. You know, it's out of their price point. Why do we have to keep talking about Jadavian Clowney when we're talking about the GOAT hitting the market? Because what I'm saying is is what Jeff Darlington is saying. Mm. These are four teams that will sign Tom Brady right now. There are four teams that will sign any free agent that they're interested in right now. So there's nothing unique about that. Yes, there is, because you just said he fell off the cliff. You're telling me that Bill Belichick is signaling the league, I'm finished with him, you should all be finished. Bill Belichick is saying, I do not believe Tom Brady is the same guy. Therefore, I'm perfectly comfortable. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't, but I'm saying based on my standard, I'm the GOAT coach. Okay. Now, see, you love to give Tom Brady great deference when it comes to quarterbacking because you say he the GOAT. Well, Coach Belichick is the GOAT of coaches. Mm, and I, yeah, 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 Don't do that. Sorry. Don't do that, Skip. Don't do that. So, in other words, he says, based on what I've seen in the games and at practice, he's not the same. And I'm perfectly fine. If he were well, to go is elsewhere. He, is he really saying that? Because you said that two years ago he had earned the right to go forward without Tom Brady, no matter what shape Tom Brady is, no, no matter what no, 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 level no. of decline but, but, he's in. If Tom, right? Tom, Tom what if it's just about Bill Belichick saying, I don't care how good he is, I want to do it solo? I don't believe he believes he's still good. He's still he, I believe Coach Belichick believes he's good. I don't believe Coach Belichick believes that he's great. Hmm. So, hmm. therefore, Coach Belichick says, you know what? I can find – I can. he believes this – that he can find someone just as good as Tom Brady is now. Not as great as Tom Brady was, but maybe as good as Tom Brady is now and can get to that same level. With that great defense I got, I put, look at that, what I had. A defense that only gave up 14 points, and if we gave up three more than that, we lost the game. Come on, Jenny. So wait a second. You just said that Bill Belichick still thinks Tom is good, but Shannon Sharp thinks he fell off the cliff. No, 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 no. I'm just going by what, look, I've said it from day one. All the pro football folks, they kept telling you, and you bought into it. 
I see he's not the same. He's not the same. So because if he was the same, he started the season the first three weeks, he was number one. That, so if he was the same guy, he should have finished the season number one. And not 19th in QBR, mm. not 27th in completion percentage, mm. behind Mitchell Trubisky. Mm. But who conducted the drive to secure the two seed in the AFC? Tom Brady did in the, the fourth quarter. The same guy that threw the pick six that lost him the game in the divisional, in the wild card round. That's the same guy. What or in the two different Tom Brady. What if you'd given that beat up, battered, See? See? declining team See? two weeks off? See? What, what if you had? Two weeks off, would that not have been gold for them? They that got team? two weeks off during the Super Bowl against the yeah. Rams, and he played bad. Really? He conducted the game-winning drive in a defensive so, struggle. I just want to make sure you understand. Uh, so I just want to make sure I'm hearing you correctly. Yeah, so over me. four quarters, exactly. it only cut so just a drive. Yeah. So what about the other three quarters? Uh, but all the other drives. What about the previous two playoff games that year? He my was homeboy. special, to uh, use your what, word. What, what, he was special. What about my homeboy? Yeah. My homeboy. He lost and Tom I Brady. Yeah, no, no, no. But I told you, I said he going to get revenge. Yep. And then went to the house that Tom built hmm. and took him down. Shannon, I told you, Tom Brady's going to hit the market at 12.01 on March the 16th, 12.01 a.m. Eastern time, and it's going to be Brady mania. And I believe that the, the bidding war will encompass up to a dozen teams. Well, so you know what? I, this, I, let, let, I like doing hypotheticals sometimes. Let's just say for the sake of argument. Patrick, my homeboy, and Tom Brady both hit the market. Mm -hmm. Who's in high? Because who is in high demand? If you the go, if he the goat, if he's what you said he is, who's in high demand? My homeboy or Brady? It'd be close call. It ain't got no close. Mm -hmm. Close to who? Well, the one guy has won six Super Bowls to one guy who won one, At and and you said it was on a lucky third and fifteen conversion. Right? I know you're not talking about luck. Mm -hmm. I know you're not talking about luck. Mm. The guy, they, the whole thing, this whole dynasty started yep. because of robbery, the tuck rule, mm -hmm. the whole thing, and then st and then what you call him gifted him a trophy, mm. gifted him a trophy. Mm. P. Carroll gifted him one, mm. gave away. Yeah. So Shannon Sharp says four teams who would sign him tomorrow are insane. They are dead wrong. Am I right? All and, and I'm saying that Michael Jordan in 1998 just hit the market. That's yep. what's happening. Michael Jordan hit the market at 35, mm -hmm. not at 43, because we remember what Michael was at 40, Jenny, in Washington. I, I remember, Skip. He was at the end of his prime in 1998. I was there. Huh. And if that's, it's the equivalent of that guy no. hitting the open market in the NBA Stop. and everybody saying, seriously? Yeah. Because they're saying seriously. First of all, Tom Brady is not at Tom Brady. This, there's no part about prime that should be mentioned with Tom yeah, Brady unless he eating prime real. Mm. <laughs> that's the only prime that Tom Brady Which should is be mentioned with. One thing he would not eat. Yeah, yeah. probably not. I don't yeah. know if that's on the play. Mm. Nah, I don't eat no prime real beef. Too fatty. Really? Mm. Nah. Oh, okay. Well, uh, see, I guess who do, I know who does eat it, Skip. <laughs> <laughs> I got to learn a lot around you guys. This mm. is interesting to think about. Chargers, Raiders, 49ers all play the Patriots next year. Yep. So Ooh, how Coach, about that Coach Belichick says, I sure hope we go there. Mm. I hope we go to one of them teams because I'm going to show you what y'all should have been I doing all along. Mm. Coach Belichick said, I'm going to show you how you, how you how you tame a goat. Mm. That would be interesting. Okay, despite all the reported interest, though, the Patriots do remain the favorite to still sign Brady. That is according <laughs> to Fox Bet and probably shifting uh, as that 11-day deadline Closer, closer. No mercy. Joe Burrow knows he has a long way to go before earning any comparisons to Tom Brady. And when asked about it at the NFL Combine last week, Burrow shut it down quickly, saying, quote, please don't compare me to the best player of all time. Let me do my own thing. Don't do that to me, please. Shannon, did you like his response? I loved it. Skip, it's just so easy for guys to throw that out. Oh, he's the next Tom Brady. We saw the quarterback out of Utah State. He got some, he, he reminds you of Patrick Mahomes. Really? Skip, because here's the thing. You know what's going to happen if the guys don't, if their careers don't turn out like, like most expect. They're going to say, you remember when they compared that guy to Tom Brady? No, they didn't. You did that foolishness. Tom Brady wasn't compared to Tom Brady when he came out. Just let the guy get a couple of years up under his belt. And then we can start making some comparisons if that's what you choose to do. Mm. But now that's just so easy. Oh, he got he, he throws the ball. He got a lot. He reminds you of Patrick Mahomes. No, he doesn't. Mm. No, he doesn't. Stop this. Let the guy, let the guy live. Skip, you don't want that kind of pressure. There's always, there's already gonna be pressure if he's the number one overall pick. But he's going, he's not going to a situation like what Tom Brady fell into, which is 
very stable, very the ownership, coaching. How many coaches have they had in, in Cincinnati? And Mike Brown, skip Mike Brown, he squeezed the dollar so tight the eagle be crying. Yeah, man, he didn't spend no money. <laughs> they ain't got no practice. Skip, you, I mean, you could drive over the overpass and watch the Bengals practicing down on the field below. Mm. So no, let 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 the kid live a little bit. Mm. Uh, I had a very different take because it gave me pause, his response, to the point that I was a little disappointed in it because Mm. what I came to love about Joe Burrow through this year, starting with the first game I watched, which was September 7th, a Saturday night at Austin, Mm -hmm. LSU at Texas, what caught my eye right away is not only did he torch the Longhorns, who I thought at that point were pretty to very good. They were supposed to be. They were supposed to be. (laughs) And he threw for 471 that night and four touchdowns, and they won 45 to 38. But at the end of the game, I'm watching him on the sideline point to Longhorn fans and call them out in the first three rows. And he's just jawing with them at the end of the game. And I'm thinking, that guy's got some stuff going on to him, right? Uh And then I watched his body language as he went to Tuscaloosa and he just walked on that field like he owned it. And all day long, it just looked like he was saying, I'm just better than you guys. Mm-hmm. And, and I liked how he carried himself. Right. I liked how he ran with the football because right. he was fearless yep. when he ran with it. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, here he goes. And it's just torch city for Georgia, for my Sooners, and then for the Clemson Tigers on the <laughs> national <laughs> championship stage. And it got so bad that he's running off the field pointing to his ring finger, right? Yeah. Ring me, crown me, right? right? Remember that? So I was okay. So I wanted him to say when asked about Tom Brady, I, I anticipated the response would be, I'm honored you would make that comparison, and I just hope I can live up to it. Because that's the Stop guy, it. that's the guy that I watched last year that I started thinking, he is that guy. Hear that. Well, let me ask yeah. you a question. If you're gonna get Jamar Chase and Jordan Jefferson, if you're gonna bring uh, Brady, his offensive coordinator, mm. if he taking all that to Cincinnati, mm. yes or no? Let me ask you a question. When he fell into Belichick's lap, what was going on? Belichick was in danger of being fired for a second time in New England because they started out 0-2 that year. And I know assistant coaches on that staff were about to put their houses on the market because they thought they were not going to But Coach Belichick Belichick said, stay with me, guys. Mm. I got something. I got this same rule. Stay with me, guys. Same Belichick who lost four out of five years in Cleveland. Yeah, the the GOAT. The the GOAT. See you in the face. As soon as things start to go rocky, Mm -hmm. you jump overboard. Mm -hmm. But if you got a good good captain, he can stabilize the (laughs) ship and save you. So I started thinking, does Joe Burrow have a little doubt creeping in now? Is he, is he thinking, is he pinching himself saying, wait a second. Stop it. I got to go do it, it, it at the next level? Yeah, so I, I want to hear the guy that said, oh, man, he got Michael Jordan game. Yeah, well, how did that work out for Harry Minor? Mm. Oh, he reminded you, he a left-handed Michael Jordan. How did that work for him, Skip? Mm. Yeah, it went really well. That was a reach. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you talk about reach. Yeah. No mercy. Kawhi and the Clippers take on the Rockets tonight in a big Western Conference showdown. The Clippers have won their last five games, four by double digits. And Houston is coming off a weird loss to the Knicks. But a win will pull them within a game of the Clippers and Nuggets for second in the Mm -hmm. West. So, Shannon... Do you expect, well, what do you expect? I expect to see? that Russ I trust. Mm. <laughs> All right, no big old get him. Really? Yeah, last time mm. uh, uh, Russ hit him for 40 piece. Mm. Get, same thing, trying to get that two seed. They're going to get it. Starts really? Starts tonight. Yep. Starts I, tonight? I got the Rockets, and we really? got two cases on it. Really? We got. I'll take one case on it. Okay. One? one? Yeah, okay, yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah. Shannon Sharp, like here come here. the Clippers. They just suffocated the Thunder in Oklahoma City, really? held them to 94, held them to nothing through three quarters. And they are about to do another number on the Rockets in Houston. This is a pick 'em game, and I love it because Pat Bev's got a little something now for Russ. No, he don't. You just watch. No, he don't. He got a little oh, something. Russ. And watch what Kawhi, watch what Kawhi does to James Harden. I feel sorry for James Harden tonight. James hit for at least 30. Yeah. I'm, Jay's got yeah, 35 at least. in it, yeah. at least. Well, he might need 40 shots to get 35 points. He oh, just might. I, I know yeah. you're not talking. Yeah. Your guy had 25 yeah. points on 20 shots. Mm. So what you talking about? Yeah, we, we got this. You, you ain't got nothing. Yeah. You, 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 this is, you, you're not seeing what's coming I, for you because they're just setting it up. They need one little game to mm. get ready for the really game on Sunday, and this will be the – the prelim right here. It's like a warm-up? So, yeah, just a little warm-up game. Lego, Lego. Feel it out. Yeah. 
this shot about to be heard around the world. Yep. About to do a number on Giannis mm-hmm. and do a number on the Clippers. Yep. And then watch watch what these gamblers say. Oh, Fox bet. Yeah. You have to bet, you have to bet like 20 grand. Okay. They so, win $2, but the Lakers win the title. You called it. We got one case, yeah, right? Got, one yeah. case tonight. I got Clippers. You got Russ and James. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah, Russ, yeah, I you, trust. You, you don't even trust them. Big you Russ. Don't like them. You know, in Baltimore, they say big yeah. trust. I like old big Russ. Mm-hmm. I yeah. love Russ. All right, all right. Here we go. I like when you guys better on Get him, That is it for us. We'll be back tomorrow yep. morning at 9.30. No <laughs> mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Join us again at the same time tomorrow morning, 9.30 Eastern. We'll see you then. Of one. Of one. Of one.